This is the start of uh, Diamond 2 Protoss, guys. Diamond 2 Protoss? Play Zerg! Zerg will be next time. I, I'm trying to keep these races all somewhat similar. Because uh, I'm trying to do all three of them. Bronze to GM. And if I play all Zerg all the way to GM now, I would have to play Protoss in a few days all the way to GM later. Or Terran all the way to GM later. But if I keep them all together, I can have a, lot, a good, you know, variety of all three. I've been watching the Zerg series since... Or I've, I've been watching the Zerg series the past week, and it's helpful a ton. You the man. Thank you very much, Trunks. I'm glad you like it, dude. Thank you, see Whiskey, for linking the social. Guys, if you like my uh, stuff, you can follow the Twitter or the YouTube. Bye, could you do a disruptor build? Uh, I'm not going to do one this game. But I could do one in general at some point. Disruptor is not actually a great unit to go for against Zerg if you're not a god. You're gonna you're gonna regret making disruptors if you're not just like mechanic basically. Scouting him. All right, this game I'm gonna show you guys. I've been showing you a lot of macro builds. I'll show you an all-in this game, okay? This will be an all-in game. You guys excited? Get ready for an all-in. This guy will probably hate me afterwards. Because this is this is I'm gonna I'm gonna fulfill that filthy Protoss scumbag mentality right now. Okay, so he's taking a gas. So, we're, so far we've made a, uh, a Robo, or sorry, a Twilight Council, and now we're going to make a Robo, and a second here. We're getting a charge upgrade right now, and we're chrono boosting it. And now we're going to pull four probes off gas. Because we've mined 250 gas. We have now mined 250 gas, guys. 250. Chrono boost the charge upgrade again. Okay, we're gonna pull our last two probes off gas. And we're going to make a lot of gateways. Put him charge again. We're going to make a prism. We're going to chrono boost the prism. Now we have eight gateways. Or no, we have nine. Sorry, I actually over made one. We'll cancel one. It's fine. 
Now we're going to start making some zealots in front of my base, outside the wall. Then we're gonna make like another pylon, another two pylons. This is very, this, is, this build is going to ramp up in supplies so fast. Now we're gonna take our zealots that we just made and a move there, shift a move here, shift a move here. This prism is going to go right here and go phase mode. And I'm going to make a shitload of zealots. Go phase mode, that shit. What the fuck are you doing? Hey, move. Now let's take our prism, un unprism that crap. And we're gonna fly over here, and we can start chrono boosting our gates whenever, whatever we can. We're all, we're all spent on chrono boost. Then we're gonna go here, and we're gonna a move this mineral line. Now we're going to go back in a prism and we're going to go back to a different base. Go back here. And we're going to prism this bad boy up over here. And we're going to make some zealots. Make like a couple more. Now as soon as they're done, I'm going to unprism this bad boy. Go attack that. Now we're going to fly over here. And we're going to come down here. And we're going to make some zealots. Like this. We're gonna send them on the hatchery. And then as soon as we're done with this, we're gonna go back in phase mode. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna make some zealots. You just keep fucking doing this. And it's so annoying for Zerg, and because there's zealots everywhere, and they die. So this build is not much micro required, it's more of a setup. And if you set it up properly, you just fucking an annihilate the Zerg. Hardcore. That is a charge lot all in build right there. The hardest thing about defending that build is defending it in multiple spots. Someone talking smack about you, vibe! That's fine. That's gonna happen. It's the internet. He even saw the gates and did, and did nothing. Well, he tried. That's the thing about that build is, even if you know it's coming sometimes, you have to have enough of a, of a preparation to, uh, to deal with it. Am I just going to allow someone to talk smack to me? Sure. If you can give me a valid reason as to why I give one shit what some random person says, try to convince me right now. Let's see what you got. I don't care. How do you counter that? You just have to have enough. You have to have enough. He wants to verse you. Now I'm not gonna waste my time right now, because uh, I'm doing a bronze gym series. This is a YouTube recording I'm making right now, so I'm not gonna just start playing random custom games in the middle of it. All right, we're playing against a Terran player. We'll do a, a macro build again. I'll do a disruptor build against Protoss. Or maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I think I feel like I shouldn't. It makes no sense. I feel like I should do Disruptors at Master League, not Diamond League. Because no one in fucking Diamond League is going to be like a Disruptor God. It's, just, it's not going to happen. You're going to like try and Disruptor things. And I feel like there's a chance they're going to blow your own units up. You'll be like, wait, what? I just... Why did my army die? Disruptors can blow your own stuff up. And you'll be like, wait, what? They can? Yes. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like giving a a little kid a loaded gun or something. It's like that's not a good idea. All right, let's scout his base. We'll probe.
All right, so we're scouting his base. What's he got? Uh, he's got a supply depot. Okay. Your probes are under attack. Okay. I'm feeling a proxy coming on right now. Never mind. It's a, a barracks is right up here. He's trying to be like fancy. So we did a, we did a thorough scout of his base, and we realized, okay, yeah, he's playing standard. I feel like, for some reason, again, I thought I was playing against like a, uh, a Protoss. So mistakes were made with my base design. Now the Reaper's gonna get away. If you guys remember, I always told you to block the sides of your base against Terran. You should totally do that. If I put my uh, if I put my buildings here and the Reaper came in this way and ran up and around and I chased him up and around, the Reaper would have gone behind my mineral line and got stuck and it would have died. So that was a little bit of a missed opportunity there for me, but it's okay. It's just a Reaper. It's not the end of the world. Okay, now we're, we're in Diamond League. We're a little bit more advanced here. We're in Diamond 2, guys. We're gonna go poke this guy's base. And uh, I can deal with this. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! He's got concussive shells, guys. That's a... That's a, that's a sign of aggression. Let's go ahead and get one immortal. And now let's make a shield battery on the edge of my nexus. The reason why I'm making a shield battery is because if you ever see a, a Terran rush concussive shells on a Marauder, okay? These stalkers went to go scout and we saw, oh my god, he's got concussive shells. If you see that, you should probably call the police. <laughs> you should probably get a shield battery because there's most likely going to be a timing now that's going to hit me that's going to involve some some bio some bio guys bio is going to be coming it's going to be coming hard now we're getting ready to go into colossus i got another gateway coming let's get another uh, pilot over here so i can see if he drops me as well at some point. Most likely Bio is coming. Let's send one more probe to his base just to get a follow-up scout. And now that we're fully saturated on this natural, let's go and take a third base. We don't have to continue making the third if he pushes me, but we have the option to take it. We can always cancel it. Okay, the concussive marauder is still sitting there. Okay, it's a. Uh, what am I drop? Run around! Oh, okay, we might be able to kill that medevac. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and get a couple of forges now. And let's also add on a couple more gateways. State thy bidding. <laughs> so we're now gonna, now we're gonna start kind of boosting our upgrades. These are really 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 important against Saren. Armor and uh, and weapons. No shield upgrade. 
Let's go ahead and send an observer towards the turret's base. And finally, we're going to get a Twilight Council here. Keep chrono boosting upgrades. And we're going to try and see, uh, you know, what's going down in Terran Town. It's always important. He's, he's like putting units in weird spots all over the place, but he's not actually pushing anywhere. He just scanned randomly for an observer. Okay, so there's no third base there. Keep making units. We're starting to get a little bit more money in the bank, so let's actually add our gateway. Let's increase our gateway count a bit more. My base is so ugly, I feel like. There is a third base there. Okay. Oh, no. There's a missile turret going down there. Oh, there's a missile turret there. Let's uh, keep canceling that. Yay, we found a spot. We found it's just right. The three little observers, boys. All right, now let's go push. Let's go push his third base. And while we push his third base, let's start a fourth base, and also start uh, Templar tech for uh, the extra gateway explosion we just had. Just go on now. Another Colossus. He knows what's coming. He knows this is happening. So he backs off. Smart move. Because if, he, if he's too greedy and he doesn't have enough to defend it, he should not try to defend that. He'd lose the game. So that's all good. Keep making zealots. Okay, there's a Liberator in my base. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to recall our army. In the main. He's going to kill one of my forges, which kind of sucks. He's going to actually kill both forges, which really sucks. We're going to run my probes around for a second. He actually got away with the, uh, with that crap, that bio. Let's go and do this. If this is how this guy's going to start playing this game, if he's going to go start going for drops and liberators, it's pretty common for Terran to play like this. It's not uncommon. But here's what we can do to counter that. Let's let's keep going our, our ground compositions that we're already doing. But let's start going into some Tempest as well, over time. And we can also put an Observer over there in the high ground open airspace. So that, that doesn't keep happening to me without me knowing about it. It'll be like our sensor tower or our overlord for Protoss. Don't be afraid to make extra observers sometimes. And now against Terran, like we always, or against, with Protoss in general, like we always do. Let's just add in a battery and a, uh, a thingy. Okay, he's pushing me. Let's go ahead and add some Templars into my group. He's multi-pronging me everywhere. Grab some army, grab some army. Fuck it. This guy's trying to be fucking Flash. So we lost our fourth. It's okay. We shall stand against the boys. Okay, now I, I feel like we could probably do a timing because he just this guy's trying to be like crazy effective with multi prong and he just threw an army away pretty big time P pretty big pretty big let's go ahead and do a timing keep chrono boosting upgrades Let's go smash his third. That one he just had a minute ago. Okay, fucking marine here. Let's go left. He's lifting again. Okay, let's back up. Because this, he's going for that that shit we talked about. He's going for liberator turtle. 
My He's a liberator shot. turtle boy. And so, and tanks. So we're just gonna kind of roam around the map and do whatever damage we can, and we're gonna ultimately go into Tempest. Because that's how you break a Terran who's just gonna Lib Turtle. He's trying to multi prog me and then go Lib Turtle mode. Is there a base over here? Let's find out. Negative. Is there a base here? Let's find out. Negative. His economy's not great. He's on two. He's basically a two base Terran. Not bad for us. Add some batteries to this base setup over here. Add some cannons. This is so. This base is so far exposed. Oh my god, is it gonna kill a Templar? Oh, that was close, that was scary. This guy is really active with his random units around the map as well. Very, very, uh, not bad. Not, very not bad. Okay, now finally, finally, we're here. We're at this stage. What the fuck? There's a ghost there. That's a ghost. We have cannons at every base though. We might get nuked. He is going ghost though because we're going Templar. So we can also, because we know it's a ghost, let's do this. Okay? Let's get my Templar to spread out. This guy's crazy dude, he just puts random stuff everywhere. Let's take another base. Over here. And now off this base, there might be some fucking Marines here again. Warpin some zealots. Find his face. Up here, Barb. We'll bring our uh, army over here to deal with this. Our our tempest. We can make cannons over here again, just like we did the other base. This guy just likes to turn this game into a weird multitask game. The way you beat players who play like this is you just look at the minimap. It's like playing a game of chess now. Like you just look at the minimap and you watch this guy throw away bits and pieces of his army all day. I always got another drop of my main. We can go like this. Go to the main. Let's recall this clump. Oh man, this guy's everywhere, dude. He's everywhere, bro. Run away! I don't know. This game is, uh... I think a lot of diamond players would struggle with someone who plays like this because they would just freak out and lose a lot of shit. But all you gotta do against someone who plays like this is just literally defend and spread your stuff out a little bit. Just don't A move your whole army one location to another to another to another. But this is like the fourth time this has happened. He's like, oh god, retreat with a command center. Now we're just gonna push with CCs. We're just gonna push with command centers. I mean, uh, with the uh, Tempest. Not with the commander. Push. He lifted another base off. He evacuated again. Now look, he's uh, he's got some shit over here. He's liberator turtling again. Let's go to the other side. And let's make sure this guy is not expanding. More than what he should be. Alright, where is it? You can see it's right there. That's probably, I can probably see this because I have really fast eyes, but I'll pretend I didn't see it, and I'll let this whole fucking middle lane die. Okay, so this guy's going for mass, um, mass ghost now. He's doing a ghost composition, guys.
Let's take another base. Just don't let players like this freak you out. Here's what we can do. Here's one way we can get something going really fast. A move here. Shift A move here. Shift A. Look at the mini map. Shift A move there. Shift A move there. Shift A move there. Shift click out all my zealots. And then stop. We'll run around my base now. We'll just we'll start doing something that's gonna tax his APM. Just like he's trying to tax our APM. Now let's go down again. Our zealots are clearing the top side. Let's go back to the bottom side. And let's make some cannons over here and stuff like that. This guy is a non-committal Terran. He's all about just counter, 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 counter. Let's go hit another base over here. I'll probably lift it off again. We can make some Templars for some storm. Let's go over here. Is there another base over here? Negative. And now we're getting attacked again by the non-committal Terran. This is uh, another multi- that's like a multitask situation. Let's go back to my base. And let's prepare to make another, um, another round of units. We're getting really close on top of this army right now. We can make a round of zealots right here. Find his face. Now look, he's doing it again on the bottom because we're watching the mini-map. He just threw away an army. Now let's go to the bottom. Now let's go back to where my base really fast. We're already sending my army to the bottom, so I don't got to stare at it. Let's just do this. This guy wants to keep fucking throwing armies away and remaxing. We'll, we'll do that too. How's that sound? I'll just make a fuckload of gates. We're gonna get nuked. Oh no! So, it's basically, this is the best tip I can give you guys, okay? Playing someone who plays like this. It's, you're going to get frustrated, I guarantee it. As Especially as a player, if you feel like, shit, my chair's all stuck. If you're a player who feels like this is actually overwhelming you, and you're like, oh my god. This is like, I can't deal with everything that's going on. I'm getting nuked. I'm getting harassed. I'm getting dropped on my main. I'm getting attacked in the bottom. It's just over and 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 over. Just nonstop. It's just really annoying. And it's fucking you over. All you got to do to play against someone who's overly aggressive like this. As Protoss. Is take your time to defend your bases. Just take your time. If he's if he's hitting you in multiple, in multiple spots. Split your army up a little bit. Do your best to dictate where units should go. To defend multiple attacks simultaneously. Because most players who play like this, they're not all inning you. Like, uh, it's like one attack and it's over. And if you mess up a little bit, it's like, oh, well, I just lost the game. It's usually... Uh, when they, like they, They'll have a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here. It's like just trying to wear you down and slow you down. And eventually you cripple to it. So you just try your best to dictate where you should defend and do all that stuff. And every time you get a moment to spare and you feel like you're in control of the game again just for a moment... Do what I did with the Zealots. Just be like, yo, go around the map and go smack a base. And while you do that, that's going to make him be defensive and you can expand again and keep keep your expansions going. The big reason why we're winning games like this in situations like this is because I'm not sitting here on two bases or three bases the whole game. I keep making probes and we're, we're at, even though we're at 66 probes right now and we even lost 44 probes this game, we kept the probe going probe count going uh and we're, we're we're keeping the economy flowing the whole time so even though he's doing little bits of damage here and there he is also throwing his army away over and over and if we look at resources lost we're actually taking better trades than him it seems opposite of that when you think about it you're like oh my god it's so fucking annoying i just keep getting hit everywhere but if you defend if you just focus on defending and then don't focus on attacking as much don't micro your attack as much but you can launch like go send 20 zealots at him go attack his base Whatever, it's fine. You'll do a lot of damage. At the end of the day, though, you will most likely be getting ahead in resources if your opponent is, like, fully invested into 
throwing his units at you to die over and over to try and harass you. And if you just build up to a death ball, and against Terran who likes to turtle up with Liberator Tank, a death ball is add some Tempest in, and you can go like Immortal Archon Tempest. That's fine. Or you can go charge the Archon Immortal and Tempest. That's fine. You can add in some Templar. That's fine. These this comp overall, you could you could delete the stalkers, and this comp overall is totally fine. It would it would beat most armies. If he doesn't have Liberators though, you don't even need Tempest really, and you could just break him, because siege tanks don't really do anything against uh, zealots. The main reason why Tempest are good though is because we're kind of skipping mostly. We're not really going for a heavy stalker composition, so we don't really have a lot of anti air. So if he starts going into Heavy Liberator and we don't have Stalker that much... These are still Stalkers I have from the early game, by the way. They've been alive forever. But uh, if we don't have any Stalkers and he has Liberators, it's going to get really frustrating really fast. So that's why that's where uh, Tempests come in. And you don't got to go Mass Tempest. Just make, like, seriously, like, six or eight, and you're fine. Have I ever dabbed so hard that my arm... I broke my arm? I've actually never dabbed in my life. Guys, I've had this bowl here, just so you know. I've had this bowl of steak and veggies here the entire day. This bowl's been sitting right next to me for six hours. I should have ate it in my break between Protoss and Terran. Oh man, wow, mistakes were made. I'm really hungry. Don't worry, bacteria only doubles every 20 minutes. Disgusting. It's right, it's sealed. So it only doubles every 10 minutes. I mean every, th every 40 minutes. But I, I did that backwards. I wouldn't eat that if I were you. I'm sure it's fine. I, I like how people freak out. Okay. We're scouting. I love your advice. Love your advice. Thank you, Breakfast Gun. I appreciate the bits, dude. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. All right. So we're going for a uh, stalker eventually. And we're going to expand. He's going to expand as well off of Marine. He's, he's chilling. He chilling. He, he chilling, guys. He chilling. Alright, we're making a stalker. And we'll start chronomissing our probes now because, uh... We took a core before our Nexus, so we don't have to worry about the Reaper getting here before our Stalker's out. Been a minute. Yo, people, you know, it has been a minute. Thank you very much for that dono, my dude. Oh, my dude. How you doing, people, you know? How you been, man? Boosting probes, guys. Where yo, you're my favorite shimmer man. Such a chill vibe. He 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 he. Thank you, dude. Yeah yeah. 
When are you getting that bad vibe emote? I uh, I really want to do emotes. I've just been so busy with this whole Bronze GM stuff that I haven't really had time to invest into that. After I get this Bronze GM series over, I'll probably have a little more free time to look at emotes and get again and get other things like that going on. It's been very time consuming though, this whole series. Because I'm I'm doing it for like 10 hours a day on average. And then we're editing after I finish my stream every day. And putting it on YouTube. It's fucking super time consuming. Can I design your next emote? I mean, you can try. You can, if you want to design my next emote, you can put it on Twitter. Tweet it at me. And if I think it's awesome, I will probably use it. But don't feel offended if I don't use it. I appreciate the gesture, but I won't use everyone's emote just because they said they want to make me an emote. So if you know that, and you still want to try, you're more than welcome to try. And maybe, just maybe, I'll be like, holy crap, that's fucking awesome. I already feel offended. That's the thing, that's how usually it is. If I if I were to be like, yeah, I'll just go out and use it. What if I'm in a situation where I'm like, God damn it, I don't want to use that one. I don't like it. I don't like that. I don't I don't want to use that. And then I have to, and then I'm just like, okay, because I said I would. That's a bad spot for me to be in. So I use if I give that little disclaimer, you make emotes at your own risk that they may not get used. <laughs> Someone in the chat right now, type Vibu Norris really fast. If you wouldn't mind, if you're a sub. It has to be a capital N. There you go. There it is. You, see, you guys see that emote? That emote was made by not me. It was made by someone who watches my stream. And I use it. And it's been there forever. And that's actually my face with Chuck Norris's hair. Back when I used to do a show called Wednesday Night Sprites, someone made that emote for me. Cancel the Nexus. That's okay. Not not bad. Not a bad trade. Run away. Not a terrible trade. Because this guy just went 2 on one medevacs and he lost one full payload of medevac. But he also killed my, uh, he killed my base, so not a bad trade. He made, well, he made me cancel it. Really, he didn't kill it. He made me cancel it. So that's actually a good trade for me. We're gonna increase my gateway count a bit. And we're also gonna add in a Twilight Council. And let's start adding in uh, zealots. Now we can add in a Templar Archives because this dude is going to uh, probably go Vikings. It's just what happened. It's just how it goes. When you're fighting a Terran and you go Colossus, they always go Viking. Which is it's standard, right? It's just very standard. But as a way you can abuse that if you're Protoss is you can rotate into Storm Tech. You don't have to stay on Colossus the whole game. You can still use the Colossus, but also add Storm Tech in. And now it's going to be, they're going to be over countering one and making it hard to counter the other. And you also create more of a, of a problem for Terran. Because now they need to counter, if they want to, they'd have to have like a composition that's like Ghost, Viking, Bio. Which is insanely hard to micro. Compared to just going for a moving Colossus and, and gateway units with microing Templar to storm him. It's very effective. I 
Alright, so we're gonna send a zealot out on the map really fast to go once again see does he have a third base anywhere and if he does where can I attack it at where's the weak point point? and now we can take a fourth base and behind this behind this guys let's start a stargate and let's take like a few more gateways like four more gates the Stargate will be just in case I need to eventually go into uh, whatever it's called, the Tempest, like we just talked about earlier. And the extra gates are because I could spend that money now. I have I have a lot of probes. I'm rich. There's a base right there. Okay. So this Terran's on three base, trying to go on four. This Terran's also not really attacking me. So now we have eight Templar. And my army. Okay. Eight Templars. These Templar are going to storm the crap out of his army. And we're going to move forward. We're going to go for a fight. There it is. He's actually got Ghost. Good for him. He's he's more prepared for these Templar than I would have anticipated. Okay, that's some cannons and a battery in his face. Whatever. We'll add in more in a second. We can do it now. Add a battery cannon. Oh, here we go. He's attacking this base. Let's go back. We're gonna have to cancel that Nexus, it's okay. No battery. Uh, cannon battery, cannon battery. This was a kind of annoying for us. We'll rebuild this base. And now we'll move out again. Upgrades are going on 3-3 though. So our upgrades are looking great, guys. We'll go ahead and just stick this game to uh, one, one Stargate. That's fine. We're not going to go Mass Tempest. We'll just add in a few if he goes for Anti-Tempest. Right, he has Advanced Widowmind Drilling Claws. Because they're still cloaked when I break them. So maybe now we will actually go Second Stargate. He's nuking right there. He's tr see how he's trying to lure me into it? He's like, yeah, come on, bro. Come on. Come on. Here's what we're gonna do. You guys ready? We're gonna A-move right here with our zealots, and we're gonna A-move right here, and we're gonna A-move right there. Shift command. Now while these zealots are being annoying as fuck. Oh, that was nice. Cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, we'll go over here now. We'll hit our his main th his third with my main army, and we'll hit his his actual natural with my zealot army. Hey, here we go. Storm, storm. Storm, storm. Let's make units back at home really fast. GG. GG. I feel like with Terran, the game could just literally end. When you're versing Terran, the game just fucking ends. In like one second. <clears throat> this kind of a composition just, uh, it makes it, again, it just makes it so hard. It goes back to exactly what we talked about, like, uh, five minutes ago in this game, where I was like, if you just go for Colossus, what are they going to do? They're probably going to go Vikings, and then you add in some Templar, and then they're going to go, what, they're going to go Ghost? Going for Bio, Ghost, Viking, Medivac, and microing that against Gateway unit, Colossus, and uh, and High Templar. It's so much harder for Terran to micro that fight. Because all I have to do with Protoss is seriously do this. Entire army, A move at Terran. And then walk my Templar forward and go, that's a pile of bio, storm. That's a pile of bio, storm. <laughs> that's all I'm doing. And the best, the, the, 
the most insane counter micro we would have to do here would be if I scouted this guy had ghost, I could instead grab some Templar, move them over here. Grab some other Templar, move them over here. Just spread out the Templar a tad. And then move them forward and storm, storm, storm. This way it's not going to be like all oh, my Templar are a little ball a little ball here that gets EMP'd and they're all out of energy. So you can spread them out a tad. That could be your micro right there. If you're like, oh, let's counter the ghost micro. Let's just spread my Templar out a tad. So it's way easier for us to micro this fight. How do you beat Protoss, that Protoss comp as Terran? Uh, there's a lot of ways, but if you're going, if you're going bio, okay? If you're going bio, being able to kite, being able to uh, lock down the AoE of Protoss, getting some Vikings on the Colossus and getting a uh, good EMPs or at least good spreads on your bio against the Templar and mitigating his AoE and then microing your uh, your bio in a way where it's like your stim pack stutter stepping backwards. You're kiting the zealots, kiting the zealots, kiting the zealots. The zealots are now all dead. And then you stutter step forward and you push whatever's left. Like the Colossus. It's way harder for Protoss, or for Terran to execute a fight like that than it is for the Protoss. So it, you have to play really well, basically, to beat that with Terran. You have to micro really well. Spreading and splitting. You spread your army, you split your army against uh, AoE, and then you just overwhelm by kiting Zealot and pushing the rest. It's fucking hard. Ranged Liberators help as well. They do. Liberators are great against Protoss. But the thing about Pro well, Ranged Liberators, though, is Protoss can make Tempest. And now you're back to square one again. It's hard. Tempests are, like, amazing at breaking the, uh, like the turtle-style liberation field uh, Terrans. Because Tempests just kill it from 15 range away, and then now you're like, well, uh, this is hard. Replace the tier 2 star with some kind of Vibu Cap Pride. Think of the sub upgrades. I did the star because I was like, Mario is pretty sweet. I'll get a Mario star in there, but it's green. It's my it's my flavor of star. It's not a yellow one. It's a yeah, green one. Oh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yo, Scoots McLean. Yo, Scoots McLean. Thank you for the 500 bits, my dude. Scoots McLean. Are you related to John McLean? I want to get back into SE2, but my multitasking sucks. You can, well, the, here's the thing. If you want to get back into it, you better start sooner than later. Because give yourself like a month or a few weeks, and you'll be like, wow, my multitasking is way better than it was when I didn't play. Whoops, this is Protoss. I thought this was Terran. I keep reading the race wrong. Okay, you guys see this? Are you guys seeing this? Notice how he only has one gateway? And he's got a core going down. You seeing this? Are you guys seeing this? If you see someone who opens up one gate, this is what you this is what your response should be, okay? This is what I want you to do. I want you to make a pylon before you supply block. Obviously. And then I want you to make two adepts. I want you to make two fucking adepts. Two freaking adepts. Two freaking adepts. And you'll be like, wow, Vibe, this is so good. Now watch. Watch what happens. Are you ready? Look at this. Are you guys ready for some sweet moves? This guy's probably going for a Stargate. Or a Robo. Five, this is so good. Check this out, guys. 
Now here's your goal. Here's what your goal is in life at this point. We're gonna make a shield battery in case this is a Stargate. Seems like a Stargate. We're now gonna make stalkers behind this. We're going to make stalkers behind this. We're gonna walk our adepts really close. We're making stalkers like I just said. We're walking our adepts pretty close. And now, we're phase shifting his mineral line right now. His main mineral line. Oh, okay. Now let's focus fire probes. One probe dead. Two probe dead. Three probe dead. Four probes dead. Five probes dead. Nice. That's that's pretty big right there. We just killed five probes and we didn't pull his entire bitter line. And he also made two sentries, which is really weird. So... We already have a lead now because we haven't lost any probes and we've been making probes the whole time. He's been making probes the whole time, but he just pulled off the middle line for a good like 20 seconds. And you know, we're, we're we killed probes. Let's go and do this now. Let's actually make our own stargates. Because he he again, he made sentries, guys. He made some sentries. That's fucking committed to gas right there. No, let's do it. Let's see if we can go for a third stargate. You know why we're doing that? Because I'm going to go for quick, quick gas now. I'm basically saying, okay, this guy's gone for uh, sentries. An amazing way to play PvP. Is this a real Phoenix? It's probably not. It's probably hallucinated Phoenix. Which means he's made even more than two sentries. He's probably made like four now. All we got to do is pick up his stuff. Just pick up his sentries and we automatically win the game. That's a hallucinated Phoenix. You can tell because when I shot it with my stalker, it took double damage. It took more damage than it should have, so it's a it's a hallucination. It's fake. And before a vibe loses to mass entry, oh, I'm not losing to mass entry. You're gonna, I'm gonna. If you don't know PVP that well, you're gonna be blown away in a minute here by the power of Phoenix against someone who opens the way he just opened. First of all, we know we're ahead in economy. Successful. Because we didn't lose probes, and we, we expanded just like he did, and he lost probes. And mining time. And second of all, he's going sentries with his gas, and we're going into uh, Phoenix. So now the perfect way to guarantee we're not going to die to anything is we take a second here to make a robo. Teleport successful. And with all of our excess minerals, we're going to start making zealots. And we're going to take these Phoenix right now, and we're going to fly across the map. Now we're going to make an observer, and we're also going to make immortals, and we're going to make zealots. And Phoenix. For now. So we can start making zealots. And we can fly into his base, and we can see if we can pick up all these sentries. Where are they at? Where are your sentries at? Okay, well, his army's not in his base. And I don't necessarily want to... Uh, I don't want to pick up probes right now, because that's how I could lose, actually. So we're going to go back to my base. I want to kill his army, is what I want to kill. And now let's fight his army, and let's pick up all these sentries, guys. Oh, hello. There's a... There you go. It's a prism. All right, guys. Let's go. Let's just pull my probes. Just be really safe about it. Pick up all the sentries. Every single sentry. Pick them all up. Now we can send our probes back. We're looking like we're winning this fight pretty hard right now. Pick up stalkers. One by one by one by one by one by one by one. So I picked up all the sentries at once because they're light armored units and they die really fast. And then I picked up the stalkers one by one because those are not light armored units. Those are heavy armored units. They're, they're, they're armored. So they die like, way slower. And now the game is totally ours because we have an army still and he doesn't. He's absolutely screwed. So now, after we kill this army, now I can go over here. And if there's army here still, I'll keep killing the army. But if there's not army here, and let's say there was nothing, I would just start picking up probes as well. Because I have enough Phoenix at this point to not care. I'd feel totally safe. And if you look at units lost, I think I only lost uh, maybe a zealot, but only probes. So if you look at units lost, we've lost uh, 16. We lost 14 workers. So we lost 14 workers and like two zealots. This game. That was it. Not a single phoenix died. 
And uh, the probes died when we pulled our bitter line just to be extra safe there. Because he was going all. There only, uh, also, the only reason why we pulled our probes is because he was warping in units aggressively with the prism. That's super all in. Very all in. Five, you smoke weed. Uh, very occasionally. Probably like once a year. Not very often. Oh yeah, two adepts. You're right. My bad. I forgot. I lost the adepts early on. There you go. Perfect. But I wouldn't have pulled probes if he did not all in that attack. Did you do Phoenix because you saw? <sighs> I would. I don't always have to do Phoenix. But Phoenix are really, really, really good units in PvP. There's only one unit in Protoss versus Protoss that can truly stop a Phoenix, and it's an Archon. But the problem about an Archon is even though a Phoenix can't pick up an Archon with Gravity Beam, an Archon can't really stop Phoenix from killing all your workers. Like, an Archon can just, like, run around the base really slow while a Phoenix just flies over and goes, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, and, like, ten probes just die, and then they get out. Phoenix are insanely good against uh against whatever it's called blah 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 against uh protoss where does vibe live i live in colorado i love you vibe love you too man love you dubstep All right, guys, check this out. I'm gonna build a pylon. I'm gonna fake him out. I'm gonna show him my, my probe right here. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna get his attention. That's kind of obvious how I got his attention right there. I zapped the hatchery, made him look at it. I'm not committing to it, I'm just fucking living. Really, Vibu? <laughs> it's actually not bad. If, if some, dude, some Zergs freak out. I lost 25 minerals to do that. And you know what he lost? Because he pulled two drones, he probably lost about 30 to 35 minerals. Because every second that goes by that you're not mining a mineral, you're losing one mineral per second. So if he's got drones going from here, like two drones going from down here to back up to his main for like 17 seconds, which is very realistic, he's already lost more money than I did. It's very minor, it's not a big deal. It's like, oh my god, one guy lost 30, the other guy lost 25. It's pretty minor. So it's not going to change the whole outcome of the game just because of that right there. But some Zergs freak out. And some Zergs do not know how to react. And you just actually get, it's like, I invested 25 minerals and you just pulled like 8 drones. Okay. Well, now I'm way ahead because that's massively detrimental to your economy. This early in the game. So it's like, it's like a chance to like... Make the Zerg freak out and make a mistake. Let's make a battery, just in case I get hit by some early units here. Because we're going to go for an Arco drop again this game. So, what we're doing is we're, uh, we're continuing pro production, but what we're doing is we go, we rush Twilight Council, Dark Shrine as fast as we can, and then as soon as 
we start the Dark Shrine, we start a Robo Facility. And as soon as we start the Robo Facility, we finish off our gateways. Make two more gates. Now we can add in our last gas. And make another pilot so we don't block here. And as soon as it's all done, we can make Warp Gated 4, four DTs with a Robo. The building timer of a Dark Shrine is very long, so it should, be go it should go down as fast as possible for this build to work properly. It all lines up really well if you do it in that order. Here comes our Robo. Let's go ahead and uh, Chrono Boost out our, our uh, Prism. Now we can make four DTs. We can start with a DT drop just to see if we can somehow win the game with the sheer... Oh, we made DTs and we win. May, even though he's scouting it right now, maybe maybe we win the game right now. We don't have to fully commit to it and be like, this is it. We can always transition out of it. But we can test and see if it will, will just... If, see if it will win. So we're going to take a third base. And we're going to start going into Archon Charge Lot Immortal, guys. That's the new, the new build here, is Archon Charge Lot Immortal. So look, he doesn't have detection right now. Oh, yes he does. Yes he does. Just kidding! Yes he does! I'm joking! It was a joke. Let's make Archons now. This is why this build is really nice, is because if you don't just somehow straight up win the game automatically, you can just rotate your tech. And look how good our Archons are against uh, Zerglings. We just killed this whole army. And my Archons are still going. Archons, like try, try and rotate them little by little. If, if that's how you honestly would ideally like to, to play this out, is you want your archons to be rotated in, in the warp prism one by one by one. The way you do it is you click drop on the prism, and as it's dropping, you try to click the old archon and do it again. Click the old archon, do it again. 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 That's all it is. You try to maintain that process while you're flying around. And you will fucking own Zergling is really bad. Research complete. Okay. Now we can wall this off. Soft data Where's my observer? Okay, my observer is going to come with the prism now. We're still just prism harassing right now, guys. That's all we're doing. Let's get a couple of pylons down here so I don't get surprised by like a Nidus. Then we can take another base here, even. And we're just going to use this observer and this prism now to continuously harass this dude. Okay, he's got Hydras. So now, now we have Storm. And we have a... Uh, we have a Prism and we have Storm. We have a lot of Templar for Storm right now. We could also add in a couple cannons to this wall and like a battery to it. So we can deal with uh, other players who... Uh, Harass it with like lings and shit on the outside. And now finally we're gonna go into uh, we're gonna go into the final parts of our tech here. Add, keep now actually really add in the immortals. Because now I'm little, I let them my first Templar. They're gonna be all about ramping up the uh, the energy for Storm. My next Templars are gonna actually be Archons. The newer ones are gonna all be Archons. 
And I can have the, the prism fire on the map and go down to the bottom and see if we can, like, set up some type of attack. Also, let's go kill this fucking overlord in my base. He's just sitting there the whole game. Now I can make more gates. Has another pseudo wall. There you go. Then we can add a couple cannons behind it again, like the other wall. Oh look, it's got a base over here. Let's kill it. We can take another base. You can find my prism now into uh, his main base. Like this way, right there. And now that we're pretty much maxed out, guys, now would not be a bad time to move out and attack him. We'll do, we'll do one last thing before we attack him. Same thing as always. Shoot battery cannon. Shoot battery cannon. It's really nice having these because in case he goes for any type of weird harass, I'll always have some type of a initial defense to set, set up. Not being, not taking a ton of damage for no reason. Alright, let's move out. We can make some batteries here, and then that's it. Mineral lines looking pretty good for the most part on every base. We're good. Grab this boy. And let's go. Charge that Archon Immortal right here, boys. Now the last thing behind this wall we're moving out. Let's add a few stargates. This is this is just in case we need it. Okay, look, there's some banelings running around. He's trying to be the kind of Protoss player that's gonna start slap slapping my mineral lines with weird attacks. So because of how we've built our base, that doesn't happen. And this last base that's open has a shitload more cannons at it surrounding the Nexus. Because this is way too much to wall off. Now we're just wiping creep out. We're resetting all of his hard work. Alright, don't forget, we have this down here, if you guys remember. So let's set up an attack right now. Oh, this is Zerg. And everything we lose, as soon as, as soon as we see him taking the fight, okay? As soon as we see his army's here. We're going to move my other units in position. Like right now. Okay, move it in position. Back up for a sec. He's going mass lurkers. Let's wreck his main a little bit. Run the observer away! Oh my god, he really wants to kill my observer. What an a-hole. Yeah, that's a bad fight. Back it up. This is a good fight. Now back at home, we can go into Void Ray. We're killing a lot of his tech right now. And he's just letting it happen because he's, he's panicking right now. Move the prism. Oh, it's dead. It's okay. We, we reset a lot of his tech. And our base over here is taking like a champ. Let's reconvene with a new army. We can take another base. Check my mineral lines. That one needs to be fixed. This one's fine, fine, fine. Let's uh, take another base. We can saturate the gases here properly. Okay, kill some more creep while we're, we're kind of chilling. All right, he's going for a run by right here. Can make a zealot right there. He's actually going to my main. It looks like. Does he have a base over here? No? Does he have a base down here? Yes. Well, 
Run away, storm, storm, storm. My it's okay. What's, what's happening right now is totally fine, guys. Because if you look at my money, I'm still very wealthy. And what we're doing as well, this army, I've, if you notice, I haven't just like thrown it away. It's not like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm just gonna let it die now. No, what we, 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 what we have been doing is we've actually been uh, trading this supply out. We, we're still replacing the Archons. But we're trading it out into something bigger and more powerful. Like this. This composition is going to be a scary death ball for Zerg to have to deal with. Now we can do the same thing over here to this base that we did to the other one. Space is stabilizing. Now let's grab all my void rays. And, uh, yeah, man. We're looking good. Let's go. Let's transfer some probes. Let's go hit the bottom left base again, because he, he's taken this one twice already. My guess is he's probably going to try to do it again. All we're trying to do right now is control the economy of Zerg. We don't have to kill his main, necessarily. We just need to control his economy. He's there he is, taking it again. Run around, go the other way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo, Bulbasaur, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the VFAM, dude. Let's hit this base now. This might be a base now. Another base. We can also take another warp prism and fly it into his main later. We're just kind of keeping our distance from the army, from the Hydras. And we're mainly trying to kill his like his bases. I'm just trying to starve him out, guys. I'm not trying to fight his army. I'm trying to... If he wants to run into Storm, he totally can. But I'm trying to keep him away from me while I kill his hatcheries. That's all I'm trying to do. Killing the hatcheries is the key to ruining his Zerg's day here. So let's... uh, Look at my look at my bank. Let's go ahead and um, just place some of my supply that I just lost. We are and we'll go around the other side of the map now. We'll just keep the pressure going. And let's start another base somewhere else. Keep this, just like we're literally repeating the process over and over right here. We can even kind of increase our gateway count here. There we go, that's fine. Let's go over here now and kill this base. And this is also, we're going over here to kill this base at the same time we're also pushing our army on this side of the map. So we can cover this base as we start it. Okay, so he's on my prism, he killed it. But now we're gonna kill the other hatchery. Keep doing upgrades. Drones back here. Okay, take, take, just take a second.
And you might be like, Vibe, dude. Are you sure it's worth it to build that much? And my answer to you is yes, because everything I spent here is probably only like one-fifth what I can actually earn from this base. And this means my base is probably never going to break. It'll never break. It'll never break, dude. It'll last forever. We have a lot of zealots still sitting here. Let's send these down and attack like this base again. Which I'm assuming he probably retook it again. So now the base is kind of finishing. This base is not, no longer need to be guarded. All these buildings are finishing up. Or a lot of them are finishing up now. And we can now transfer some more probes to it. And not have to worry too much about it. Okay, he's attacking me on that side. So let's actually grab our army. Oh, there's a recall right there. Now we even have a lot more gates that I don't think I added yet. I didn't even add these gates. You know what that was right there? You want me to tell you what that was right there, guys? That was a Zerg expressing a feeling of not knowing how to stop that. You're like, what the fuck? If I attack you anywhere, I just die. You see, as Protoss, if you're trying to improve the game, that's what you want to happen. You want to have your opponent be like, I don't know what to do. Because what you're doing seems unbeatable. So that's the goal here, guys. That's how you're gonna. That's how you're gonna like. It, the the better you get at that, the faster you can do it, and the more it's just gonna be like, well, looks like I just fucking win. How do you beat that? A good way you can beat that is a broodlord based build. But here's the thing about Protoss versus Zerg. Okay, Zerg can do it too, just like Protoss can. So you can make spines and spores at your bases. But here's the thing about, and you can also burrow like a lurker here and there. If you're, if the, if the Protoss is like, I'm gonna keep running zealots at your base all day. I can burrow a lurker with like 10 spine crawlers at a base. And you can lose 5,000 minerals of zealots where I lose maybe 400 minerals of spine crawlers over like four rounds of warp ends. Because lurker spine destroys zealot runbys. And it doesn't even need to be mass lurkers, it could be like one or two. But as Zerg, to break a Protoss who's going mass cannons, just make Broodlords. And let your Broodlords kill the cannons, and go forward from there. You see, the problem with that Zerg player that we just played against, was he had- that Zerg player had no plan for late game. Did you notice how easy it was? Every single time we attacked one of his bases, it just died. There was never really a defense at a base. I'm not saying he needs to have mass spine spore. I'm not saying he needs to do that. But every time I attacked his base, all he had was Hydras. He never, ever, ever expanded his horizon of tech beyond Hydralisk. That was his end game, all game. I'm gonna go Hydras the whole time. Go in Hydras. Like, Hydras are okay, but they kind of expire uh, as the game goes on. Like, you need to transition to something better than, it, than that eventually, like Broodlords or something. Use Hive Tech. Because that's exactly why that Zerg felt like... Where he's like, alright. I don't know how to beat this. What do I do? I'm just gonna die. It's because he never switched out of Hydra Tech. He just sat on it. He never switched out of the Hydra Tech. Never ever switched. 
Okay, we need to get ready to take our second cannon. I mean, a second uh, assimilator. Because this probe is coming to my base and it's coming fast. Watch him run right to my gas. No, 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 no. Alright, we're gonna scout his base. Same thing as last time. We're gonna go double gateway. You wanna build your first or your second gateway when your first gateway is like 80 to 90% of the way done. And this guy did the same thing. So we're both going double gate. Also, for saturation, if you guys notice, we hit 16 uh, probes on the mineral line, and then we never take probes off the mineral line. We New probes fill up the gases that we build out of the Nexus. That's important. You should also do that. If you if you don't do that, and you like fully saturate the gases, and you have like 12 or 13 probes in the mineral line, don't do that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cripple you early game if you do that. Do not do that. Do you know the strategy for team games? Team games are a little different because it, it, there's a lot more uh, factors there. But if you're Protoss and you want to play team games, I would recommend just probably going Mass Phoenix. And getting in a, your ally to go like Mass Zerglings or something. Or like Mass Hillions and Cyclones. And you'll probably love life. Phoenix are great at killing expensive units. But they're not so good at killing like massalings. All right, we're gonna push forward with our stalkers, and we're gonna get an idea. Okay, he's gone adepts. So check this out, guys. Check this out. This is how you deal with people who go adepts. Ready? Let him commit to your ramp. Oh, he canceled it. Okay. I'm gonna go for a ground build this time, guys. We'll go for a ground build. And because this guy also made an Adept, I'm assuming he's going to follow this up with a Stargate. Most people who go Adepts usually go Stargate. It's pretty standard. Watch. Here we go. Let's build a pylon. We can always cancel the pylon later. Let's make a shield battery in my mineral line. And keep chrono boosting probes. <laughs> Same thing with this mineral line. Put a shield battery in it. Because if an oracle shows up in my base, it's going to have a lot harder time killing probes now. Like this. The Oracle killed nothing. Killed zero. I am the voice. I am here. What's the easiest race to master? It's opinion. It's it also it depends on the kind of person you are and the kind of play style you like to have. Okay, this guy went double oracle now, so that's enough to power overpower a, a thingy. A shield battery. So this is why I actually do kind of prefer to go. Uh, I do actually prefer to go Stargate in a lot of my PVPs because I could probably punish the shit out of this guy if I did. This guy, but if you're the kind of player who likes to go for ground, I, I'll, I'll commit to it this game. For you, just to kind of get an idea. We're going to have our army spread up a little bit. A little bit of stalker sentry on that side, and a couple stalkers in the main. For this oracle crap. Let's go to get some more gates now. 
And this time around, we're gonna make disruptors. I will actually go to disruptors this game. And we're going blink. Let's go ahead and hallucinate a, a phoenix and let's go scout his base. We can also start a third base. We don't have to necessarily use it right away, but we can. Okay, he's going stalkers behind this. Consciousness awakened. Okay, he's got a stasis trap at my third. Go. We're gonna use a couple disruptors, guys. I'll use disruptors for real this game. Yo, still 044. What's up, dude? Thank you for the sub. Welcome to the VFAM, dude. So check it out. Our first attack is gonna have uh, no observer in it, but we do have a hallucinated phoenix, so that's gonna spot for us. So how's this? Is how we're gonna attack? We're gonna poke with our stalkers. And we're really gonna let the disruptors do the damage before we really take the fight. And we're gonna see exactly where he is with our Phoenix Observer thingy. Our little hallucinated Phoenix. There he is. We're, we're mirroring builds right now. So he's gonna come forward. Let's throw a fucking bomb at him. Back up. Let's throw another bomb at him right now. We just blew his disruptor up. Because we shot, we shot first, boys. This is gonna be kind of interesting because we're both doing the same build now. Do another hallucinated phoenix. Okay, let's shoot first again. Right now. Okay, let's shoot first again right now. Let's kill that oracle. We can kind of boost out our um, the more disruptors. Then we can even take a forward base. Now let me show you guys how to easily take advantage of a Protoss player who's going for something like this. Well, he shot first that time. That was good for him. He also has an Observer, so it's even better for him. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into Tempest eventually. Let's really quickly as well start. We'll do something that's going to fuck him over probably. We're going to do a lot of things. This game's getting a little crazy. Okay, no third over here. Let's go ahead and make a uh, static D structure in every every base I own. Let's make a dark shrine and let's make two stargates. And we'll keep making stalkers for now. It's getting wild, boys. Here's how we're gonna transition what we're doing right now. This is a weird PvP. We're going to make a couple dark templars and we're gonna just. Make things weird for him if he didn't do what I just did just now, where he uh, makes a couple static de static D structures and whatnot. And then we're gonna go into Tempest. Let's make a third Stargate right now, actually. Let's go ahead and put a couple of cannons here and a battery. We're good. That's enough. We're just running around with our army. Kill that thing. He revelated me, but now let's make a hallucinated phoenix and go scout if he's pushing me right now or not. Keep making disruptors. Try to never stop making disruptors until you have like eight of them. Is he pushing? Okay, he's also making cannons, so he's doing fucking literally exactly what I'm doing. So he's not stupid. So we're not even going to bother making DTs now. It's a waste of my resources. That was a really juicy hit by him. Good job. Well done. We 
can blink backwards. We can always blink backwards with our stalkers. Okay, so now we're going into Tempest. We can start chrono boosting our Tempest out. But don't, I wouldn't be too worried either. If you're someone in this situation, in, in this kind of a game, and you like, let's say, lose a big round of stalkers like I just did, it's not like the game is automatically over when that happens. Because this is like Ling Bane. This is like the Protoss version of Zergling Bane Ling. Shit just dies really fast. Okay, this base is probably gonna die. They have to evacuate, it's okay. Chrono boost my Tempest again. And now we can use, uh... We can use our... Whatever they're called. Our Tempest now. Alright, we're gonna make an oracle like he has also made an oracle. It's actually a really good idea. That's huge. So now the Tempest add a whole other layer of depth to our build here. And now eventually it's going to start turning into a, a build where it's, it's just uh, Tempest and Disruptors. Chrono, Chrono, Chrono. Okay, let's try and go find some of his army. And now let's actually make some DTs. I'm gonna go scout with some DCs around the map. I might deny some new bases with that. It'd be really annoying with it. Oracle, try and find his army as well. Where are you? There's some stalkers right there. Extrapolating strings. Okay, let's go this way. There's the majority of his army. Alright, so we're gonna do this with our zealots. They move right there, shift, they move right there, shift, they move right there. Call it a day. He's actually, dude, he's fucking doing a good job at like denying a lot of stuff. Well done by the bro. But now, the big problem though is he's still going Mass Stalker Disruptor and that's it. This is the power of Tempest, boys. Tempest will push by themselves like this. If he blinks forward, we can just shoot him with Disruptor shots like that. Oh, we don't have charge. Oops. Okay, let's get another robo. We'll put my temp we're, right now we have our tempest and our stalkers in the same group. And we'll put our uh, our disruptors in a separate group. Because they're they're more fragile, they're, they're we need to keep them safe. We can take another base. This dude keeps going for like my units in such a weird way. Legit, I don't even know. This guy's crazy. I really don't think this guy is fucking bronze. Or, I mean, uh, not bronze, uh, diamond. This is actually, I feel like I'm playing an advanced PvP right now. That was a massive hit. That was a massive hit. Look at it, like he's fucking flanking with disruptors and shit. He's going to my bases all the time. What a god. This guy's not fucking diamond.
<laughs> Alright, let's go down here now. He's hitting his base hard. We should be able to save it. He just, he just, uh, blinked. So, if he blinks like that, oh shit! <laughs> Disruptor battles are so funny. If he blinks like that, he can't dodge it anymore. But the, the plan is, every time he blinks, we can, uh... Run away, run away. Every time he blinks, we can always, um, what's it called? Uh, disrupt him then. Blow it up. We're just A-moving our, our main army, pretty much. And we're microing the disruptors, is really what we're focusing on here. That's what we're trying to do. Take another base. So I can keep my economy flowing. Send some DTs over somewhere else again. Let's send them to like the top left or something like that. And then over across. And we'll try to engage this army over here. See if I can knock out some cannons and make these DTs actually do some serious damage. Okay, he's also going Tempest now. Okay, so let's do this then. There's one scary thing about what he's doing, and it's fighting with Tempest by themselves. Because I have Stalkers now, as well, still here, and I can blink on him like that. And there's DTs doing that. We sent them out earlier. Okay, cool. Every time I expand... This guy's... I don't understand who this guy is, but... I think he's watching... I honestly think this guy might be watching my stream. I don't... I feel like there's observers everywhere that are always scouting every base I do. But yeah, he's always on every base I make. <laughs> every time. Alright, push forward. Again, it's just two control groups. We have a Tempest group and we have a Stalker... Uh, a Stalker and a Tempest group. If all my Stalkers eventually do die, I will not remake them. Tempest are god here. Tempest god. I'm gonna stop microing my stalkers. I'm just gonna let them die because Tempest are better. Oh, juicy. You just gotta throw them out there and you can micro the ball when it's moving, by the way. If you guys didn't know that, you can move the ball around however you want it to go. Look, he's flanking me with the shutters again. Send some more DTs across the uh, bottom side. This would be really annoying. Okay, well that was a... Uh, that was a game. I don't really know how to describe this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, all we do... <laughs> all we really do is uh, we started off with Stalkers and Disruptors, okay? And then we switched into Tempest to replace the Stalker with Disruptors. A good Disruptor count in total is to have would be around eight. Eight Disruptors is perfect. Yo, nice deal. Thank you very much for the bits, dude. Like, eight disruptors is good, and then the rest of your supply should be pretty much Tempest, which would put you at, like, maybe, like, 14 Tempest or so. We have 16. And then, uh, you could use the, any excess supply to be, like, a few DTs or charge lots here and there. DTs are great, because DTs can very realistically overpower, a, like, one cannon. And then, so if I, if the guy makes, like, one cannon per base, kind of like, like this one, for instance, if I hit, if I was against myself here, and five DTs show up walking in here, and they all go attack this cannon, this base dies. If, if I don't react to it in some other way. It just creates more chaos in the base when you play like that. Uh, 
So we just we have a little bit of DTs roaming here and there. Um, why are some DTs different? I don't know. It's, it's like a graphical thing they added into the game. It's just random. There's no. It doesn't do anything. It's just random. It's just it's just the way they look. They they have like a blade or they have a scythe. Uh, but yeah, DTs add extra chaos to the build, to the situations. And all we're doing is we're literally making DTs, and we shift a move around the side of the guy? map. Yeah, I don't know who it was, dude. It's crazy, right? Nostalgia, thank you very much for the bits. He played pretty good for fucking... I don't think he's Diamond. He played a little too good for Diamond. But uh, ultimately, it goes, like I said, it goes Stalker Disruptor into Tempest Disruptor. Because the reason why Tempests are so good is because, number one, they can siege everything. They can literally siege anything in the game. Number two, they were buffed recently, so they move really fast, so they can get around the map quickly now. They're much faster than they were before. And number three, you cannot be hit by a disruptor with a tempest. So if you don't have to worry about friendly fire of your own disruptor shots, and you don't have to worry about these tempests getting shot by enemy disruptors because it physically can't hit them. So now all you got to worry about is air units, and you got to worry about uh, enemy like stalkers, something that can hit your air. And it, most of the time, if it's Stalker Disruptor versus Stalker Disruptor, it's going to... It, one, if one guy, like I did, we went Tempest way faster than he did, all we had to do was zone his Stalkers out with Disruptor shots. And that was it. <coughs> so our micro was literally one. We, one is my oh, Tempest group, yeah. and three was my Disruptor group. And I was just going back and forth, trying to get a good fight with my Tempest. Just being like, okay, this is a good spot to fight. And if I'm like, oh, wait, no, you know what? Let's back up a bit. I can back up. It's fine. And we're just trying to zone the ground underneath our Tempest with Tempest or with uh, Disruptor shots. And occasionally you hit a really good one. And it's like, oh, shit, like 10 things just exploded. Can you kite Void Rays with Tempest now? Uh, void Ray. Uh, if a Void Ray was already on a Tempest, a Void Ray would probably be able to keep up with it. Until it, the Tempest died. Because the Avoider can also shoot kind of while moving if it's already, like, attacking it. But, uh... Well, I want to see this guy's stats really fast. Well, he is still playing constantly. I don't know. Maybe he's just a random guy. It would just so happen to be that we both did the same thing. He played it really well for a Diamond player. I want to see his overall uh, record. He's 76 to 72. Yeah, no, he, I don't. That was not bad. I was like, God damn. Bro. I don't know. I don't, I don't think he's sniping me anymore. I think he's just like fucking. I'd have to watch the replay to really feel like I could confirm that. And I don't want to watch the replay. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. If someone watches my stream. So he may or may not have been. But I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say he wasn't. It just was. He played really well, though. I did not expect him to play that well. Alright, we got another PvP. This time I'll do Phoenix. I think Phoenix is easy mode Protoss, by the way. If you guys want, if you guys think last game looked a little crazy and you're like, God damn, that, that looks a little rough. That uh, he's that guy. The guy I just played a, sh a streamer. And he's streaming right now. Okay. I was just surprised because every time I expanded, I was like, "Oh, there he is again. He's attacking my new expansion again." This guy has amazing map awareness. But it's fine. I don't really care that much. Let's go and scout him. We'll be going for a, uh, a Phoenix build this game again. It's just much, much, much easier to uh, set up control of the game if you go Phoenix. It's way easier. You'll be like, I feel like you'll be able to see it in this game. You'll be like, wow. Uh, yeah, this looks way easier. When you say Phoenix or easy mode, you mean PvP? Yeah, uh, Protoss versus Protoss. 
and Protoss versus Protoss. Because there's not a single unit Phoenix can't really get rid of except for Narcon, but Archons are so much later in the game. And by then, the game is usually kind of decided. So we're going to make a uh, uh, Nexus. Also going to make a Stargate now. The first board and we're going to go harass his base. We're going to open up with a little bit of harass. Now behind this, we're going to make two stalkers yes, with a shield battery. And we're delaying our pro production for just a second because this is like that crunch time in PvP where we're both kind of picking our opener. And if I pick a bad one, you know, if I pick a, a ris too ri much of a risky one, I could potentially lose a lot of probes. So this is really safe. We have stalkers and a shield battery. Okay, he's going defensive stalkers. All stalkers defensively. And he walled off, just like I said, we should do that. So he actually has a good idea what he's doing as well. He walled off the the ramp. Good for him. Now we're going to try one more time to get into his base by hallucinating our shades on the side here like this. Just try to get in as best we can. Maybe he doesn't block it. Maybe he misses it. He missed it, so now we get in here and kill a lot of probes. Let none deter us. For this is a lot of damage he's absorbing right now. Let's get a shield battery because he's not defending this, so it makes me think he's uh We're still killing probes. Yeah, he's uh kind of all in here. Or not really, I wouldn't say he's all in, but this is definitely like a lot of damage was sustained by his base just now. Okay, now he's fucking committed. Stutter step backwards, boys! Grab some more probes! Grab some more probes! This is like ridiculously aggressive here. Yeah, he one based it. This is a one base. I was fucking committed. And behind this now, if you look at his probe count, it's pretty much dead because of the adepts. We could uh, go into Oracle right now. We could just start zapping more probes. This was this was it. That was all he had. We could zap more probes. And from here, this, like the opener we just did, this is when it turns into, okay, if, if we're not dead yet, we... Uh, like, th this was a very standard opener for PvP that we just did. Double Adept into Oracle. That's super standard. And then we would turn it into another Stargate and going Mass Phoenix from here. And if he allows me to kill all of his probes, pretty much, uh, it's going to be really easy to win from here. It'll be uh, super easy to win from here. He scattered with Shades. I scattered what with Shades? That he was moving out and, again to attack me? It's kind of expected. If Well, the thing is, okay, like, if he's, if he's scouting or... If he's attacking me on the minimap, that's fine. It's okay. It's not, it's not, uh, you're talking about like right here. He's saying I scouted this with shades. What? Okay, I, I don't know, I honestly now, I don't know what you're talking about. But, uh, basically all it, all it means is if I get into his base and there's nothing going on, like, nothing's defending his base. You can assume you should be getting ready to be counterattacked. Like, this game might turn into a base trade. And in doing that, that's why we made a shield battery. It, obviously, we made it a tad bit late because he's already, like, committed to the fight, like, before it's even done. But it's okay. He's got a lack of natural. Oh, that's fine, too. Like, all, all of this, guys, I knew I was getting attacked. I made a fucking battery. I'm trying to explain it. The, the most simple way to, to go through it and be like, okay, uh, he's not attacking me. 
or I mean, he's going to attack me is if there's nothing stopping this and he's like, time to pull my probe line. This is the biggest indicator that he's not going to be like, oh, I'm probably just going to come home and uh, defend myself. I'm going to hopefully get rid of the adepts quickly while I'm going to now counter you because ultimately what happened was my adepts eventually died to probes, but we killed like two thirds, if not like three fourths of the entire middle line before that happened because I was focusing a bit more on this and I wasn't just constantly running around his base killing probes. I made a fucking battery, guys. I made a battery. I knew he was going to attack me. Worst case scenario, we lose our natural and we fall back to our main like we did. Best case scenario is his attack actually just is really weak and we crush it. Or he gets me when the battery's done. But you can see after the after it's all said and done, where the probes are killed, he's got two probes mining minerals and he's got two probes mining gas and he's got three probes just chilling. So he's pretty screwed. Mecha fan, Dark Stevie. Guys, I know what you're saying. Thank you very much. We're all on the same page, boys. I love you. Yeah, pulling probes is like the, a good call here. Because this is it. If this dies, game's over. <clears throat> but again, all, all it would have been from this point on is uh, another Stargate. Go fucking Phoenix. Just go Phoenix. Go for Phoenix. And we would uh, pick up every unit. Our first goal, if we start going into Phoenix, would be initially we need to be careful about his about whatever army he could still have. Pick up any units he has. Once we have enough to really pick up his units and not have to like, <coughs> excuse me. Again, our goal would be to pick up his units, but I'm not gonna do that if I have like three Phoenix. I'm not gonna go into like five Stalkers with three Phoenix and be like, let me go ahead and pick these up. I'm gonna chill. I'll wait on it. I'll keep scouting where he is and be like, oh, he seems like he wants to attack me. If he does attack me, I can use pickups early on. If I don't have enough Phoenix to actually kill units, I can use Phoenixes to disable units. I can keep picking up all of his Stalkers and his Immortals while my Stalkers kill his army defensively. So it's totally fine. But if he doesn't ever attack me again and he tries to go back into like uh, a macro mode where he's like, let me just recover now. Once I get enough stalkers or enough uh, enough phoenix, I can pick up his stalkers or whatever else he has, and then eventually also start picking up his probes. So his probes aren't the priority. The probes, pr the killing the probes priority is with my adepts and my oracle, but the phoenix is definitely the priority. of The phoenix is his army. Is what I'm trying to. The only thing I'm really trying to say here. More PVP. We can do it again. We can do it again. On one hand, your opponent's trash, but on the other hand, you're also trash. What? Are you calling me trash? Is that what I'm reading? Are you calling my opponent's trash? Spread us. <laughs> Trash Master Vibe. All right, we're going to take a second in Gateway. Probe just went over here in the fog. Let's just check it really fast. Yep. Let's uh, wall him out. Okay, he's continuing the uh, the pylons here. Okay, he's created a little door here for a uh, cannon. But he's also walled himself out of my base. Let's grab some probes and deal with this in my outside of my base. Zealot. This is uh, cannon rush full on, so all we gotta do is keep keep the cannons from going up, and we'll put like two probes on the uh, on his probe. And we keep making probes of our own during the during the process. Okay. He uh, 
he went uh, for a very awkward don't let me wall him out of my base situation here. <laughs> it was very weird. <laughs> well, we just made zealots. We just started chrono boosting zealots because the way he was trying to cannon rush me was really fancy. So he made a lot more pylons and a lot more delayed cannons. So zealots defended it. Zealots aren't always going to defend that, but yeah, they did that time because he he just tried to make it weird and delay cannons with more pylons. He underst that guy understands if I wall him out of my base, I win the game automatically. That's just how it works. I can, d I can then control the ramp and never let him come up the ramp again. And I can proxy shit outside my base. And if he opened up a forge, he can't do anything about it. But he tried to avoid that from happening by making a weird pylon wall <laughs> off my gateway. It was interesting. On a scale of 1 to 20, how happy would you be if D4 came out? Probably a 25. I'd be off the charts, bro. Off the scale. I'd be super happy. Yo, nice deal. Thank you for the bits, man. Thank you for the bits. Diablo 4 would be sick, dude. That'd be so fun. Super fun. So funny, I know, dude. Me too, bro. Dude, I would be awesome. It'd be so good. Ugh. I want D4 now, Blizzard. Give it to me now. Diablo 2, best Diablo. Changed my mind. What if Diablo 4 came out and it was somehow better? What if What if that happened? How sick would that be? I agree right now, though. Uh, Diablo 2 is the best Diablo that currently exists. Diablo Mortal maybe might take the cake. I mean, Diablo Immortal look pretty, looks pretty sick. <laughs> I can't, la I can't say that without laughing. All right, guys, I'm gonna do a new build for you. Let's do another new build. I haven't done this build yet. I'm gonna show you another all-in build. We're gonna do a Immortal Century all-in. This is old school shit. It's kind of out of the meta. Doesn't really exist anymore as much. It, it does exist, but it's rare. But if you're someone who likes to play this way, here you go. I'll give you. I'll give you a game of it. Someone out there probably loves that I'm doing this right now. Protoss is definitely a race against Zerg that can abuse and control uh, the matchup. So there is no natural, so we might need to ramp up our gateway count really fast. There is a fast gas with a pool. This is an early pool zerg. So I'm actually going to still expand because this is like a 14-14. This is not, this is like a 14-14 to expand. This is not a, like a 12 pool. I'm going to put my core kind of in the back where it's a bit safer. I don't want my core to die. And I'll fill in this gap with another gateway in just a moment. <coughs> All right, so we're gonna make one zealot to deny this zergling pressure. Let's make a robo. We'll make it a away from the overlord. There might be another one there, but it's fine. If there if there is, it's fine. It's not a big deal. So 
So this build is very gas expensive, so we're gonna take gases a little bit faster than normal. And now that's probably gonna be our last chrono boost on our. Uh, that's, I don't really care about the Overlord. It's gone. It's gonna be our last chrono boost on our uh, Nexus. Now it's gonna be all the mortals. I got some speedlings outside my base, let's pay attention. Another gate. More lings. Another gate. For the boost another immortal. We'll make another immortal. Oh my god, I'm slow. I wanted. To, I actually wanted to trap the lings right there. I wanted to get like ten of them trapped in there or something, because he was like really stuffed into the wall. Let's shoot, let's actually back the zill up a little more, and if he does that again, we can uh, potentially trap even more. All right, we're gonna make one more immortal. That'll be kind of it. This will be the timing. This is an old school build, boys. Old school build. <laughs> Alright, one more gate and we're done. Okay, now what's gonna happen is now we have enough sentries. We're now going into Pierce Dogger. And we're gonna move out of my base. And while we move out of my base, behind this last immortal, we're gonna wall it off. I return to serve. And we can warp in new units if we have to back at home. Get like one more stalker. Okay, we're good. Let's go. Let's go attack him. Now there's a few things that can counter this build, but this build hits a really sick timing. It's really, really scary. And uh, the, uh, whatever it's called, the the Robo that's making a prism is now going to be what we make weapons with from now on. So we can make like a weapon right now really quick because we can make like four stalkers and we can push. Okay, let's get right to his ramp and just block the ramp. Never again will we let units come down. Load this up, we can go over here, whatever. Drop them over here. We can land. Force field, force field. Force field, force field. Make, zealot, or make uh, stalkers. It's built super, just old school. No third units can come back again if they try. But he's basically already dead. It's kind of over. And he even says, he's a Wings of Liberty. It is! That's what I said! It's a Wings of Liberty build! I'm here in the shadows. And that's it. That, this build is incredibly fucking strong if you uh, can micro force fields. Zerg has more tools to deal with this now, though, than, uh, than they used to. Ravagers. Ravagers are really good against this. Baneling drops are really good against this. Uh, and yeah, I, I'd say that's the... Baneling drops are old school. You can still do Baneling drops back then. So that's that doesn't change. But ra the fact that Ravagers exist now, that Ravagers make this build really crappy. Which is why no one really does it as much anymore. If someone understands that, and they if they scout, oh, you're going for a Robo Immortal all in, because I see a Robo with uh, like eight centuries. Okay, I'm expecting a uh, Immortal all, a, a Choo Choo Train Immortal all in. If they just make Ravager Zergling, like eight Ravagers and mass Zergling, and all they're gonna do is surround you when you're like out here, when you're walking across the map, or like right here, when you're not in a choke point, basically. If they surround you in the middle of the open, uh. 
the lings put you into this point where you have to funnel yourself into a little donut, and the ravagers just start shooting the middle of the donut, and all your Protoss units die with to corrosive bile. That's all you gotta do. That's all you have to do to beat that, which is why that build's not super common anymore. So Zerg kind of owns it now. So I'm not gonna do that build a lot, but for those of you who want to just abuse it so against Zergs who may or may not know what they're doing, that was the build right there. How many gates did you use? I used seven. I used seven gates in a robo. And my robo, as soon as my robo finished, I never stopped curtain boosting it, and it went three immortals, and then a prism, and then an observer. And then it was done. Alright, this game will go for a. Uh, what should we go for this game? I'm thinking. Let's go for uh, let's go for a standard build again. Let's go for, let's go for a Stargate opening, a defensive Stargate opener. <laughs> Is this the real vibe? It's me. It's really bad. I'm him. That's me. So he expanded. No pool yet. Probably now he'll build it. Ah, you can't build it. I'm blocking it. Oh, I'm lagging. He's lagging. Okay. Okay. Uh... Whoa, 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 whoa. Get out of my way, bro. Probably built a, a pool somewhere else. No, he didn't. Holy crap. He really wants that pool to be there so bad. <laughs> that's a delayed, that's a super delayed pool now. Live, your series has inspired me to play as a two again. I just lost five in a row. Reminded me of uh, good old times. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dude. Just stick with it, dude. You'll you'll advance. I promise. That was pretty funny, though. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna make a stalker. What the hell? This guy's super, super laggy. Super duper laggy. Okay, so the plan here is, guys, it's this. We're going to build a Stargate in the back of my base. We're going to build a gateway, again, right here. In the opening part of my base. And then a little gap here. And, uh... We're gonna oh, we're gonna harass them with an oracle, and then we're gonna go into charge slot arc on a mortal to keep it really simple. It's a defensive target opener that goes into I something stronger. We'll start making adepts as well. Adepts, you need to make adepts to not lose your base. Let's uh, go build a. Let's prepare to possibly build a pylon here just for a second. Pull my stalkers over here killing an overlord. Alright, now it looks like we're fine. Glory to the day long. 
Right now, let's get a Twilight Council. And another pylon. And now we're going to take a third base in just a moment. This is a this is more of a defensive opener. I'm not really aggressively smacking him with the depths yet. We're making we're keeping it more simple. We're doing like a more simple stage of aggression here. Then we can make one phoenix after this oracle. We can go kill overlords in this thing and deny scouting. Dimensional strings attuned. Let's go harass him with the oracle. Our fates are one. And let's take a third base. Alright, we killed one drone. He's got a spore, he's got queens. <coughs> Let's make a forge, a robo. Okay, he's badly busted here. Go back home right now with the Oracle. We'll seal this, try to seal this off. And now let's pop our Oracle DPS on here and help our probes. Let's make another Oracle. Try to boost that shit right now. Yeah, we might be dead. I killed my core too, which really sucks. So we're getting mega all in right now. This, this, I feel like this is the biggest weakness when you do open, uh, when you open Stargate, is this getting Baneling busted. But we're, I think we're done, boys. A lot of links. A G G. We died. <laughs> GG. You're no good, man. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Trying my best. Mainling bust is kind of a counter build, though, to a Stargate. Uh, like, you, you can counter the Bandling bust if you have an Oracle in the right spot at the right time and you find it. But if you don't find a banding bust, it's kind of a counter build. You kind of get fucked. Is that my first loss? That's my first loss in this league with Protoss. Anyone who's asking me, is that my first loss I've ever had in this bronze gym series? No, I've lost a few times. I'm no good. <laughs> How do you even see that coming? Uh, it, it, that, that's where, uh, so if you guys remember back to when I said, alright, we're going to keep it really simple. We're going to not harass him with an adept. We're going to, uh, instead, instead what we're going to do is we're going to just keep it really simple. We're going to harass him with an oracle and play defensive. There you go. That's why we lost. It's because I didn't have an adept scouting the fact that he is actually going for a bathing bust. So I guess that's actually kind of a bad idea. I'll just, uh, I'll just fucking attack him with the depths and just micro even more. And scout more. Right, we're scouting his base. <coughs> He's got one gas. He's making a Reaper. Guaranteed. Oh shit! He's also expanding, so it's a, it's a standard game. Standard Reaper expand versus a uh, versus a uh, whatever it's called, uh, gateway expand. <coughs>
But it's gonna be hard for his uh, Reaper to get into my base. Because of the Sim City we've created here. So if he if he commits further up, his Reaper dies. Like this. Oh, the grenade, huh? He still dies. Now we can uh, go around the map. Now that the Reaper is no longer a threat, we can poke we can poke him and see what's going on at his base. Start, get ready to start a uh, Robo Bay off of my uh, tech. Oh, there's, a, there's a mule there. I'd like to kill a mule, please. Okay, he's gone for a cyclone. So, since he went for a cyclone, we're actually going to rush an immortal. One oh, immortal, really yeah. fast. Yo, squids left. Thank you, dude. I appreciate the uh, the sub. Welcome to the VFAM, dude. Research complete. All right. So if his cyclones push me, we're gonna fight him near the ramp here. And I'm honestly thinking this game we might want to go for another blink stalker disruptor composition. For the most part, we're just making one uh. One immortal, just in case he pushes me right now with the cyclones. Vibe question mark. Immortals get melted by upgraded cyclones. Not when I have a ramp though. If I can go like this, and he can't see me, it doesn't matter anymore. The only way this would be a problem is if a fucking barracks was flying right here, and he's like, he's like, oh, a barracks! Oh god! Then I'd have to do something like pull my probes or block him to my so I get like outrange it. But we are going blink stalker and uh, disruptor now. That's the plan. Because he's gone into a cyclone. We're also going to make a sentry right now. Just one. And this sentry is going to scout his base with a hallucination. And I'm going to find out, is he going actually like Hellion Cyclone Mech? Or or is he going into um, you know, standard standard play of whatever else. The standard stuff. Bio. That everyone goes. Like every fucking turn goes bio. I live on Alright, so we're gonna get an observer. Try to whisk my upgrade here. A couple more gates are coming. Alright, let's make a hallucinated phoenix and let's go scout. Let's go scout and see if he's actually committing to mech or bio. How many cyclones you got? He's going mech. Okay, so we're against a mech Terran, guys. So this is really good that we're going into cyclones. Here we go. Let's fight him. now have, uh, what's it called? Blink. It's gonna be the same thing was when it was PvP. This is a great anti-mech build as well. This is a very good anti-mech build. So we're gonna wait for just a moment here. Just to see if he's gonna push me again anywhere. I'm gonna get charged as well on my forge. Make a pylon over here so I can not blindsided. Oh, no, because I have a fucking fog spot right there. That's really bad. That's scary. Not knowing what's up there. I am here in the shadows. 
Now we're kind of just chilling out. Let's send one more hallucinated phoenix around and let's see if he's taking any bases on the bottom side of the map. More than what he should be. Like a, like a crazy fast expansion somewhere. Then we can take another base. Let's take this base and let's knock these rocks out. So he's taking that base. That's pretty normal. Let's go and let's go and punish it. We do have four disruptors, and we also have the ability to uh, recall. You require my skill. There he is. Let's start throwing disruptor shots at him, one by one, little by little. There you go. That's what happens when you fucking go master chapters against cyclones. <laughs> Just throw him at him, one by one. Even though we don't even know he's there, he might be. He's behind me. Now we're gonna start switching into uh. Zealots. Zealots, boys. And Tempest. We can add a couple more gates. So I can make a little more Zealots at a time. And I'll also add another couple star gates now. Cause I, so I can make Tempest a little bit more at a time. Because my money is getting ramped up here. Alright, let's focus base again. Alright, looks like here we go. We're just making Tempest and the Stalker. Okay, he looks like he's going around maybe. Because where does where does army go? We're gonna think about this. Are you going around me to flank me? Oh, he's going completely around me to backdoor my base. Let's watch this now. Pay attention. There we go. We microed that. We just knocked out some, uh, some of that crap. Keep upgrades with Chronos. And look, he's pushing me now. Let's go ahead and uh, make some zealots to help me with this fight. Because the thing about Cyclones is you want to lock on. You want to lock on your Cyclones to the dude, but then you want to chase him with a lock on. And the Disruptors have prevent the, the Terran player from being able to chase. Because if he chases, he's going to blow his whole army up to a uh, <coughs> Disruptor shot. Here we go again. So we will bleed out our, our dudes on the ground here. They will die eventually. My gateway units are not... They're not valuable anymore, in all honesty. You don't really want to be going this mass game against complete. this, if you can help that. Let's get Dark Shrine as well. Same thing as last time. But, this, but the, uh, the good thing about the gateway units now is watch this. All my zealots now, they're going on a, a suicide mission to go kill a base from Terran, or, or at least distract them, while my main army does some serious damage. Also, last thing, last thing, last thing, last thing. Remember what just happened with the, with the Hellions? Let's not let that happen again. What if I'm not in position next time? If I'm not in position next time, that'll suck. So let's add in some shield batteries. And some cannons everywhere. Okay. Hey, look at base. There we go, we just wiped out a lot of a lot of Tempest. I mean a lot of uh, Cyclones. Kite him! Bring my dudes over here. If he chases me, he'll all of them die. Good 
Get him, Zealots. Genetic matrix active. The disruptors are so good against this kind of a style. They're so good. <laughs> okay, last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start revelating his army so now I can really know where he is. It's also added a second robot. So I can make more disruptors at a time in case I lose them like I just did. Okay, we have a lot of tempest. Let's push him again. Push him again, guys. Zealots will go around the top side of the map and just shift a move all over there. Zealots are out of my army now. We meet our fate. No, re re revelate it! Oh my god! Oh, here we go. Take another base. Does he have this base again? Yep. He's got that base too. Let's go kill that one next. That's why we had cannons in. We just lost like no probes to that, really. It's still fully sat it's still like pretty much a fully saturated mineral line. That was really good. Ancient glory. Presiding. Your demand. Consciousness awakened. Grab my probes now that we have a moment. We just killed two bases. We have a moment to regroup here. New units are being made. Let's make some DTs this time. And we'll send the DTs along the side of the map. And we'll shift a move there. And now we can send our main army over here. To the actual fight. Oh, my base is walled. Oh shit, that's not good. Okay, let's go over here and deal with these dudes. Make some zealots. He's gonna try and lock onto my my nexus and kill it, but he didn't quite make it. And now all of his tempest or all of his uh, cyclones are kind of. There's a ramp right there. He's fine. They're so fucking fast. Let's do the same thing over here. More zealots on this side. So. A click, shift, a click, shift, a click, shift, a click. It's going down all the way to his natural. If it, it doesn't kill anything else. Grab some probes. Oh, okay, there's a base right there. See, if I have enough Tempest, I mean, if I have enough Disruptors, I can literally zone him forever. Zealots are killing another base. Or they're trying to at least. There you go. They just launched balls at him, boys. You can do it over and over. And the, the fucking Tempest eventually just break the base open. Just break the base open, boys. Break it. This comp is fucking filthy. I like it. It's good. It is very good. What a victory. <clears throat> Yo, Dutchie, thank you for the host, Duder. Uh, good game earlier, by the way. You played really... Uh, Really solid. If you're actually diamond, you play above diamond level.
Balls, 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 balls. Balls, 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 balls. That comp's really good. That's like the... I feel like that's the Protoss. Uh... That's the Protoss version of uh, Broodlord and Fester. How to break mech. Now, finally, if... If... That Protoss player would have done what I do, where I'm like, alright, let's just give him that mass fucking... That big ol' transition of BCs. <clears throat> First of all, I would have not have uh, expected to see as many Cyclone Disruptors as, as he had all game. He had a lot. All game. But if he would have started having a little bit less... I would have honestly uh, been more, like, paranoid about it. Been like, okay, maybe we uh, need to send an observer in his base. There's, he's not really having much of an army anymore. All you should do to defend that is literally just go. You, you could just go into like mass void rays. That's one way you could deal with it. You'll you'll eat some Yamato cannons for sure. But if you get within range of BCs and you turn on your beam overcharge beam, you will kill battle cruisers so fast. Tempest are good too, but you don't want to have only tempest. If I have a revelation and I start picking Tempest ap or picking BCs apart from max range, that's not bad, but you don't want to just have only Tempest, because if he teleports on me with BCs, I will die. I 100% will die. But if you have Voids as well, it uh, it changes things. Voids fucking hit really hard. The amount of DPS a Void Ray can do is insane. BCs are very scary though. Oh my god, a probe's in my base. Hipster pilot, you dick. natural okay forge okay interesting scout around my base scout all around my base scout all around my base boys I'm starting to think we're getting fucking proxied by some bull crap Oh, it's right there in my natural. Oh my god. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Actually, no, no. Don't wall, don't wall. But that walling, that is really dumb. So we're making a few shield batteries. That's how we're going to deal with what just happened here. They keep proto boosting my dudes. My dudes! Let's go over here and start denying this cannon before it's actually done. And maybe kill the probe.
guy's incredibly annoying. So that was not diamond level shit right there. That was just annoying. <laughs> sorry. I'm oh, sorry. You could do that if you uh, if you want to try. <laughs> that was annoying as hell. I didn't realize I was getting cannon rush there. And I was like, oh, well, we actually just got cannon rush, guys. That sucks. Let's go ahead and uh, clear out our whatever it's called. Our gas and our main, too. Let's get a forge behind my main. So we can fly across the map with our Phoenix just for now and see what's going on. Oh, never mind. These, these, uh, whatever they're called, are really slow. These voids. So just keep backing up to our shield batteries. Try and kill the weakened. Oh, there, kill that Phoenix. This guy's going really all in, dude. He's very all in. So he's, yeah. This is an aggressive as hell, Protoss. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna try and micro our best and make Phoenix. <laughs> This game is a uh, crazy. Successful. And he also, he's also proxy to Stargate. I, I feel like there's a possibility because his units are coming from this angle. All of them, even the Phoenix behind that was rallied to help. It didn't come from the top left. It came from top right. So I think he might be seriously proxying the Stargate over there. This was super weird. On the wings of justice. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. Where do our enemies look? So we're uh, we're making uh, we're making stuff, guys. We're making stuff. We're making Phoenix. Phoenix are insanely good if you have uh, if you can have map control and a lead, kind of like what we have now. Because you'll see, you'll see why. Give it, give it just a second here. As soon as we actually start fighting something, and you'll see what I mean. Phoenix are pretty good. He's also making Phoenix. Let's go and camp his Stargate. Let's go ahead and kill that Phoenix over there. Let's go ahead and back up for a second. Oh, there's more Phoenix over here. Don't hit the Void Race first, hit his Phoenix first. Alright, does he have a third? I'm wondering. I'm, I'm curious if this guy has a third base. Yep, there you go. We found it. There is a third base there. Attack, attack, attack. Take a fourth base. Time for battle. Uh, don't attack, don't attack, don't attack. Holy shit, we uh Oh god, it's all going We lost! I'm just kidding, we did we didn't lose. We're fine.
we do have a lot of uh, a lot of stargates. Game's over, boys. Wrap it up. We're done. Gotta boost my stargates. We're ramping up our phoenix count, guys. We're gonna make a couple zealots. These two zealots are gonna be rando as hell. I'm just gonna go straight into the fucking natural. Go attack there. It's just like more of a. It's a glorified scout that can actually kill probes. Now with this, we're gonna get Phoenix range. It's huge, very important. And we're gonna kind of wait. We're gonna try and Chrono boost this out and get it as as soon as possible. It's very, 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 very huge upgrade. It's kind of how you win PVP: Phoenix versus Phoenix, because one guy could have more range than the other guy, and Phoenix kill Phoenix really fast. So it's it's upgrade that could literally end the game if one guy has it and the other guy doesn't. Run straight into the middle line. Does he have it? He does not have it yet. He does not have the upgrade yet. So check this out. As soon as we get the upgrade, so that's that that zealot scout was literally a. We we now know where his army is. We know what what he has. He's got zero zero phoenix. With uh, no range upgrade, we just got it. So watch the difference here. There comes a big difference in our armies. There he is, right there to the right. I just saw a Phoenix. Did he just get it? I don't think he has it still. It's kind of hard to see. If he doesn't want to fight me, I'll just fly right over his mineral line. And pick probes up. It's the power of the Phoenix! Do the same thing over here. So he's going DTs. Which is why we made cannons at every base. So this guy's broke now, and we make cannons at every base, and we're going to enforce these cannons at every base. We're going to reinforce our, our, our stuff. Because again, he's going DTs now. DTs are no joke. If you allow them to get in your base and actually kill stuff. So that was it. That was his. That was the final move. If I allowed, if I didn't have cannons and I just had a bunch of Phoenix, and then he's got DTs just slicing up my probes all day, that could suck. That could be a serious problem. But we make cannons everywhere, so we were good to go, boys. And now, if we look at the probe count, he's got no probes. So the Phoenix definitely decide everything. They they decide the game really hard. They put the other Protoss into a really weird spot. And finally, the last thing about Phoenix is if you can set the game up to be in a position where they can't really push you because everything they push right with everything they push with will just get picked up and die, picked up and die, picked up and die. You can actually switch into carriers. And it sounds like, oh, what the fuck is that? What carriers? Carriers vibe? Are you serious? Yeah, no joke. You seriously can. The only thing you're really actually scared of at this point is like archons. So if I switched into, let's say, like charge lots and carriers, just spend all the rest of my gas on carriers and all my excess minerals beyond that on charge lots. I could deal with some Archons have an army. Like he's not he's not gonna have an army that's literally just one hundred percent Archons. But I could deal with Archons with the carriers. And the Phoenix in the fight could just pick up every single unit that's not an Archon throughout the whole fight. I don't even have to kill him at that point, it's just pick him up. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And the pickup actually just disables them. And we good to, good to go.
I'm back, guys. Sorry. I am a pick. I muted my mic. I was talking to uh, I was talking to Livy really fast. We'll do, uh... Okay, I read his lips. He said Terran's trash. I'll do a, um... I'll do a standard ground build this time. With PvP. He keeps running over there. I'm going to scout it. Okay, so here's the plan now guys this this game If you don't want to be the guy who's like All right, I'm gonna go Stargate if you don't want to do that you are mandatory forced to go What I don't know what he's talking about <laughs> Lol. I have no idea what the fuck that even says we're too shit to do that or too shit to that. I don't know. This guy's, this guy's on crack. He's on crack. Well, yeah. You you have to go. Uh... Hold on. Does he have a natural? No. Okay. We're gonna make batteries. I think I'm getting proxy gated all in or robo all in. We're going triple stalker. I really think I'm getting proxy all in now. Actually, no, 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 no. Sorry, that's a bad idea. Triple fucking gateway, it's stupid. Gateway, gateway, robo. That's way better, because if he goes DTs, I just lose. Let's make a shield battery. And also, you notice how he's chrono boosting the uh, core? That's a sign that's telling you, okay, we're getting... We're getting attacked by a stalker timing, probably. Let's make another battery. And then start kind of boosting out stalkers. I am here in the shadows. The probe's still there? I don't care about the probe. He hasn't moved. If the probe moved out of my base and walked into my uh Here, I can just do this. I don't want to pull my army away, because he could attack me at any time right now in the front of my base. Okay, he's running to me to die now. Yeah, that's fine. Scout, one last time, just to be 100% positive, there's no pylon over there. And now, let's get a uh, Twilight Council. And we'll get... Uh, an observer now. Just in case it is DTs, because we haven't seen shit, guys. <coughs> I'm setting one probe around the entire map. I just literally shifted every expansion. Because I'm playing blind right now. I'm playing a little confused. And we're going to make a hallucinated phoenix. And we're going to scout his base with it. I'm still making probes defensively though. So worst case scenario. He's hitting the base and we're both just macroing. Best case scenario. He's going to all in me and I'm way ahead. 
because he's taking forever to do it. Alright, we're getting blink on my stalkers. We got a, a Void Ray and an Immortal. Okay, he's, he's going Void Ray Immortal, guys. Let's make more uh, gates. Make a couple zealots. We want to kind of have a balanced army now. He's going air units, plus he's going for a Stargate. Alright, sorry, he's going air units, plus he's also going for immortals. If I just go stalkers, my stalkers are going to get shredded by both of those kinds of compositions because it'll be too much DPS on my stalkers all at once and it'll die. But if I add in just a few zealots, I can actually have my, uh, my zealots tank a lot of shots of the immortals while my stalkers deal with the void ray, and then my stalkers can deal with the immortal after. So it makes more sense if I add in some zealots now. And he's, he's going all in. He's, he's, this is it. He's pushing me. I'm here in the shadows. There we go. Let's get ready to defend this. We're about to have blink. I'm here in the shadows. Can even kind of boost a couple gateways to speed him up. Research complete. If we have blink now. Let's get charged now. Then let's start making more zealots. I return to serve. Here we go. He's going. Blink a stalker. See what I mean? Though those zealots just bought me so much time to wreck this shit. So the zealots, uh, they gave, yeah, like I said, they gave my army a lot of durability. If I didn't have zealots there, I would have been a whole, I would have been a different story. My stalkers would have just exploded one after another, not have been like, oh, we lost. Because here's what, here's how it is, guys. A zealot has 150 overall stats, like health. It's got 50 shields and 100 hit points. Nice sale. Thank you again for the bits, dude. Nice how you pop bits all over the place. Thank you, man. Uh, an immortal has a... Or, sorry, an immortal. A, uh, a zealot has 100 hit points and 50 shields. A stalker has 80 hit points and 80 shields. But the difference is... An immortal hits a stalker for 50 damage per hit. So it takes 4 hits for an immortal to kill a stalker. An immortal, however, only hits a zealot for 20. So it takes a zealot... If it's got 150 health, it takes 8 hits for the immortal to kill a zealot. Really enjoying the bronze to GM tutorials. I'm currently plat and doing very well using your macro 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 against ZVT macro, and macro, ZVP macro. but terrible against CVZ. I keep losing to 2. Base Ling Bane all in any help. Um, <clears throat> against ZVZ, if you're not, uh, if you're if you are using the uh, the wall off build I showed you guys, all you gotta do is have your overlord in position to scout and see if your opponent. You gotta watch the mini map a little bit, and you gotta see is your opponent making links, making links, making links. And if he is, just make roaches before you're fully saturated. Uh, and you don't have, you don't even have to make mass roaches. You just need like uh, ugh. Sorry. I got fucking hair in my mouth again. You just need like five roaches. Five or six roaches. That's it. It's like five or six. Behind your wall. And then you go back you can go back to droning. And then um the The other part of it is if you're if you have someone going mass lings against you, and you see, oh, he's killing my Evo Chamber, it's getting red it's getting yellow. 
It's getting orange. It's getting red. As soon as you realize that your Evo Chamber is going to break, just uh, put more Evo Chambers behind it. The, what I called this before whenever I talked about it was it was uh, plugging the hole. You just plug the hole. You just fill more Evo Chambers behind whatever, whatever Evo Chambers are currently going to break. And what happens is you create a new wall behind him that he can't break through faster than you can build it. <coughs> because the way it works is... <coughs> If you have Evo Chambers in a line, in a wall, in a perfect line, to reduce sur surface area, so like three Zerglings max can like smack an Evo Chamber, you can actually build an Evo, like an Evo Chamber itself will build faster and generate health quicker than Zerglings can smack it and kill it. So the Evo Chamber guaranteed finishes. And then when it finishes, and if it, if it actually gets killed then when it's done, it spawns Broodlings, which once again add more DPS to your army to kill more Lings. And then you go. For, you keep doing that over and over and over until he runs out of lings, and he eventually will. Especially if you have two queens and a spine, and like five roaches smacking the lings the whole time, he's going to be losing lings at a very fast rate behind the wall. You just have to plug the hole and make a few roaches before you're fully saturated, and then as soon as you have a few roaches, you can go back to saturating your base while you're plugging the hole, filling evo chambers in the wall more and more. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Yo, Duke, if you're still here, man. Later, man. Have a good night. <clears throat> Thanks for watching, dude. And oh, also, yeah. yo, serious misgivings. I appreciate the thirty dollars, dude. That's huge. Thank you very much for the massive support. Much love, much love. Yo, third end. Thank you for the sub. Welcome, dude. Welcome to the B fan, bro. Thank you for the sub, dude. Clown killer, first time viewer. Welcome, welcome, bro. We're just killing, uh, killing everyone up in here with Brodos. Is Idra still play StarCraft? No, he doesn't. Idra stopped playing StarCraft in 2013. So it's been a while. Got a gas in a pool, and this is after a hatch, so we're safe to take a natural early. We'll do a gateway opener, or I mean a, a stargate opener again this game. I'll I'll try to do a stargate opener. Alright, we're gonna fill in another gateway now. And then we'll go Stargate after. <coughs> Keep Colonel Boosting probes for now. So with this with this adept, what we really want to do is we want to scout his base while also potentially harassing some some uh, drones. We know he's got a speed, or we know, we know he's got a gas for potentially speed, but that's about it. So let's get into his base and let's at the very least let's do this. There's a lot of lings there. Okay, cool. Let's have our shade go scout. Is he still mining gas? He's not. He's only got speed. I've just confirmed we're not being Baneling busted. This is something we didn't do last game. We serve I didn't lose the Adept either. Yes, we just we just confirmed he's going speed, that's all. Now behind this, let's go and get another... Let's get a Twilight Council. And I'm expecting this Zerg player to go for like a third base now. Glory 
And we're gonna get a Phoenix first to kill Overlord, and then we're gonna go do an Oracle second. If you want to go Stargate, you probably need to go for uh, Adepts as well, just so you guys know, because Adepts are actually really good at wiping out lots of Lings. That's uh, it's kind of mandatory. Research complete. Let's make. A, I'm gonna make a couple pylons here. Just so, or not, not yet, not yet, it's too early. We're making an oracle now. And now we're going to attempt to take a third base. There's that overlord, there it is. I'm going to leave one adept in my wall. So I don't get just like, run over while I'm out of my base. But let's give my adept some good some city, like this right here. If Ling's attack me, I can flood the, or I can choke the flood. Right there, and it'll make his his numbers count for nothing. His numbers count for nothing. And now from here, now we can go pylon, pylon, and we can start adding in like a robo, a forge, a temple archives eventually. And now we can go, you know, go into the whole uh, tra charge lot archon mortal build. Okay, now he hasn't really committed to anything yet. He has not committed to uh, attacking me. So I'm going to use this oracle. To, now that it's out, it's going to defend my third. And now that my oracle's out, also our Adept Glaive attack should be about done. So this is a timing attack right here. This is a this is a Adept Glaive timing attack. And behind this, we actually, we're going to make gates over here. What am I doing? This is smarter. Alright, let's try and kill some drones. Focus fire drones. All drones. We can shade into the main right now. And keep focus firing drones. Kill drones. Okay, he's got a lot of roaches, guys. So if he's making a lot of roaches, let's actually start getting a second robo and let's make like a void ray. It's a lot of roaches. We also just killed a ton of drones. As you guys just saw. Oh, what am I doing? This I just did it again. Oh my god. I like just did that twice. I want to build them here. It makes it harder for him to harass my probes this way. Okay, he's attacking me. There you go, we're safe. We're good to go. And now we have double immortal. And we're going. We're going charge the dark on immortal. That's the plan. I feel. We can move forward a little bit. Let's add in like a cannon here and a battery. And let's uh. I'm having my phoenix go all over the map and attack things. We'll leave our oracle there as well. We'll take this base though. We'll take another base. And we'll wall this one off with cannons and uh and stuff, the cannons and batteries. And then we'll keep expanding to the south end. So we'll kind of like exclude the top end of the map from our, for ourselves, and we'll focus on the bottom end.
<sighs> okay, he's pushing me with everything. So just, uh, let's just chase him down now. He just d took a really big attack. That wasn't probably the best. We'll just chase him down with everything. Pick that queen up. Okay, he just launched the wave of locusts. Let's back up. Let it. Let the lo wave of locusts just kind of like bleed out, or fall behind rather. And right now it's landing, so let's back up entirely. Keep the production going of my immortals, of my other stuff, my charge lots. <laughs> this is just charge lot arc on immortal, guys. Charge lot arc on immortal. Now I can make a couple batteries and cannons here. Time for battle. Understood. And now his swarm must are on cooldown. Oh, well, let's get those back up. Because he's got another round of locusts ready to go again. And because because this guy is actually going into uh Because he's going into uh whatever it's called. Swarmost? Let me show you how to deal with Swarmost if you're Protoss. It's just storm. You just storm it. Because it puts the locust on a cooldown, and then he can't he doesn't have enough time to like recover. And you just crush it. So we're gonna chrono boost our storm upgrade. And we'll eventually we'll eventually get there. We shall He's pushing me again here right now. Let's try and save this base. Seems like he wants to snipe my Nexus. Oh my god, it barely lived. And there you go, we walled off the other side. Now we can hit him without having to worry about much. And Storm is done. Storm's done. So watch this next uh, locust wave. We're just gonna storm the shit out of it. Here it comes right now. There you go. Now it's not enough to really be scared anymore. And now we can push forward. You can make zealots over here as well. While he's doing this crap. He's kind of counter all me. Now, same thing again. Locust. Okay, we, we don't have enough storms to really like finish it off here. We're like five energy short of more storms. We just run away. And we can send our zealots that we just made uh, to another base. Keep making immortals, keep making charge lots. We just sent the wave up here to go attack this base. And we're done. We're just kind of A-moving his base. Okay, he's launching another wave of locusts at me. Let's back up again. I can't fight that right now. Let's make another round of storm. Okay, let's push again. Also, behind this, let's add on a couple more gateways because he has a spire. He might go into, uh, he might actually go into Vitas, and I want to be able to go into Phoenix if he does that. Let's kill the uh, spire. Let's just kill the spire really quick. Now I have a lot of storm. So these locusts will get stormed to shit if he uh, keeps if he does another wave, which he just did. Right, now we 
go for it. No, there are no zealots. Another upgrade. Again. We shall stand. It's just like a constant back and forth battle. I sent another wave up here right now. Just one. Because this is like this, this is happening over and over. If these zealots smack that base right now, when he just did this right here, then we win. There you go. It's all dead. Let's go forward. And now these zealots are going to smash his base while everything's on cooldown. And our immortal Archon stuff can just run into his base. At this point, we're honestly getting really low on energy. Let's just make Archons. Let's go right into the base. Zealots, GG. So it's just repeatedly over and over charge the Dark on Immortal. And you have to kind of wonder. You have to kind of wonder if this guy has another base at this kind of a point in the game. Because you're like, well, he's, uh, he's still making a lot of units. So what's the deal here? Very unlikely he has this base or this base. Well, there's a very high chance he might have this base. So what I could have done with my next warp in, if the game had not ended, because he keeps he actually kept killing this base over and over with a bunch of roaches. What I could have done is I could have made another round of zealots, and the next round I made over here could just be to literally go like this: a move here, a move here, and then a move down to there, and we can see if there's a base right there. And there is. So it started seeming like, all right, well we're getting pretty long in the game here, and you're still not dead yet. So. Your money has to be coming from somewhere. And while we go to, let's say, attack this base, it's getting to that point in time where our main's mining out. It is mined out. We really need to take another base. Like, we could put, like, a couple pylons here to put gateway warp, like, warp gates on this cliff to lock it out, and we could put cannons on it. And then we could just have a nice, healthy nexus here that's walled out from this ramp, which means the only way you can get into this base is if he runs around this way, which is kind of where my, all my reinforcements are coming anyways, so I would probably catch it. So it'd be fine. I could maybe put like one cannon in the middle line with a battery. We'd be okay, probably. But resources lost-wise, we're doing really good. We're way more efficient than he is, even though he was the one with Swarmost. Because we countered his Swarmost with Storm. We countered it. Yo, Clown Killer, thank you for the bits, dude. And it, Siffy, Siffy, thank you for the bits as well. Oh, thank you guys. Much appreciated. How did you rapid fire zealots and high templars? I thought you could only set one gateway unit to rapid fire. You can rapid fire almost anything in StarCraft. Oh, no, I sorry, I see what you're saying. You're saying how did I do multiple units? I uh, I told my things to make a templar and then I let go of it and I made zealots after. I like literally let go of the key and I right clicked it off because right click wipes off what's on your mouse. Like if I go chrono boost right now, see how it's a target? If I right click, it wipes my mouse and it cleans it off. It's like a cancel. And then I hit the next hotkey for the next unit and then I did it once again. So it's another PvP, guys. I'll do a ground build again. I haven't really... I don't really feel like I've played much ground builds with the macro game. I've only really been on, like, a Stargate macro game. Most of my ground builds are... I get all-in. But I think most PvPs are all-ins. I think we're getting cannon rushed. 100% we're getting cannon rushed. I saw a second probe. If you see two probes coming at your base, expect the cannon rush. Just watch. I'm gonna watch this shit. You guys ready? 
It's a fucking forge. I knew it. It's because we saw two probes in the middle of scouting. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of this probe as soon as possible. To, this guy microed his probe well enough to make me uh, to make me want to do something different now. And what the, the thing he did well enough was he uh, he actually microed his probe. He actually microed the probe. So not a lot of people do that. Uh, like in lower leagues, so we're gonna get we're getting to a point where my my actual reaction should have been to make a forge here instead of a gateway. If he's actually gonna be good enough to not let me fuck him over like that. Right, let's run away. So we're abandoning our base now, boys. The base is now being abandoned. It kind of sucks. I think I probably lost this game. Let's do it. Let's, let's go for that ultra, ultra lame ass style. I really like that he's not killing my gas because it shows me he's not taking my bane. This is fine, dude. This is what I wanted. Isn't he going to be so far behind? I am behind, but I'm not as far behind as you think because this is a massive investment. So that's where all his money went. His tech is non-existent right now. My, op my opponent's economy is non-existent. So if I can somehow break this motherfucker's base, we're going to make a Void Ray because it's the most universal unit I can make right now. Uh, that might be able to overpower a cannon and also probes. Micro my probe. We are one with the shadow. Send a void ray out. I am the heart of darkness. Are you gonna cannon rush me again? Very well. For the reckoning. Very That's a yes. This game is hilarious. Kill his Void Ray. It's the most important unit right here. Void Ray first. On my weakened Void Ray. That no, didn't really matter. But it still worked out because we still killed everything he had. 
So we still killed three units for losing one. That's still a good trade. <coughs> so this game is just really awkward. And we're just trying to make the most of it. I do want to push him. But I think I'm going to wait until my cannon finishes in my midter line here to push. Because if he sends another zealot at my midter line or like an adept and I push, I might lose the game. Because then that puts me in a position where if he defends my push and kills my whole midter line, I lose the game. It would be really bad. So we're going to prepare cannons in my midter line so that doesn't happen, hopefully. More stalkers. Okay. See if I can pop any of his units out here. My cannon's down over there. There's a stalker right there. Okay, we got multiple stalkers and uh, multiple voids. Just pull back. It seems like he really wants to attack me, so I'll let it, I'll let that happen. We can pull our probes for this, and we can just go attack. Kill the voids first. That was a one base all in. He's not expanding with that kind of a composition. So with the fact that we have two bases again means this guy is committed to just trying to kill me now. So I really want what I really wanted to do is I wanted to push him. I wanted to push him at some point to be like, does he have a natural? Does he? Huh? Does he have a natural? And because of how much he kept attacking me, maybe go, no, nope, probably not. No, he probably doesn't have a natural. So instead of fighting him way the fuck over here, maybe I should fight him at, at my base. Like defend with my base so I can either use my probes or my cannons or my buildings as like a meat shield to help me out, to help me possibly win the fight even more. As I said, I can't believe you got away with the extra nexus. So guys, look at this. This is what I was saying with the investment. Watch this. This is when I recalled my probes. This is when I start mining again. If you didn't know anything was going on in this game, would you think that I'm behind? If you, if you didn't see the minimap and you just went, who's ahead in supply? Now let's look at it really fast. Let's look at this guy's tech. So far, he's down in supply to me by four. And look at his tech. He's just now starting a cybernetic score. He just now started mining his gases. This one hasn't even started mining yet. This one's been mining about, uh, what is that, like 66 gas or some shit. Look at me. My core is 25 out of 36. His core is three out of 36. I'm actually ahead. Other than the fact that there's a ass load of cannons over here, and this is actually a thing. And I've lost resources, which is going to increase as soon as this pylon and this gateway die. He's invested so many buildings over here that are doing nothing now. So you, you could say, Vibe, dude, you lost 1,200 resources. And my opponent has invested 300, 600, 900, uh, 1,050 in the cannons. That's now 1,200 with the gateway included. That's now 1,500 He's invested 1,500 resources in this right here. This is 1,500, guys. That's a shitload. That's more than I've lost. And then you could say the extra, the excess of the resources that I've lost where I had to have my probe sitting here for like 20 seconds before this nexus was totally done and I could recall would be the difference. Where it's like, oh, vibe, uh, you know. I would say we're about even on resources invested and lost because this is going to do literally nothing all game now. This is, this is irrelevant. And the fact that he left my gas here meant that I know he's not taking my natural. Or taking my base as his natural. Which he could have... You heard my... What did you say? My wheezing, dude. I need to drink some water. One sec. <coughs> One sec. Good God. So we just recalled our probes. Our probes just arrived at our base. And I know he's not taking my base as his natural because... Uh, yeah, he's, he's just not. My gas gives me vision of that. So I'm like, all right, cool. The only thing I was worried about was now if if he killed my main and he goes, all right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
pop down a nexus right here. I'm going to pop down a little nexus. Then we're, you know, then it's going to be a problem. But you can see I'm starting a Stargate. And his core is halfway done. And he's got a cannon, which is why I did not want to go Oracle. Because if I thought if this cannon's going to be here, my Oracle's not going to get much done. And then if he makes a Void Ray or a Phoenix first, I could lose the game. So I decided to go Void Ray to play the odds. Because this is a really weird situation. Then going from here, look. Look at my supply. We're not doing poorly at all. Probe-wise, I'm still ahead in probes. I'm still mining more than he is. He actually just lost a zealot in my mineral line. He killed one probe. Uh, so, but so, yeah, supply-wise and probe-wise, I'm actually ahead in both regards. This is, this is why we won. So it seems crazy, but this was a major all-in. He did not have full saturation, but he did that. And then we killed his army. He, he did an attack where he killed one of my Void Rays to lose one of his Void Rays and two Stalkers. And you guys got to think about it like this. He keeps making stalkers that keep dying. And he's the one on one base economy. And we're the one now that's on two base economy. So he's he's throwing... He's actually going to start catching up to me in resources lost. Even though I lost my entire fucking base to a cannon rush. And now the last thing we wanted to do was... I don't know how cheesy this guy really is. Maybe. Maybe. He either tries to fly oracles around now and get really weird. Because I he's the one with map control. He's the one who knows where I am. Because he, he knows exactly what I'm doing. That's it. This is all I got. I got the corner of the map. I am the one who is like, I'm not sure what you're doing because you're you're the one attacking me all the time. So I don't know how cheesy you're actually going to be. But you are being aggressive. <clears throat> so making cannons is a good way to go. Just in case he goes DTs. I don't just randomly die to like one DT. And then he commits really hard with shield battery push. And the biggest mistake he made of all, the biggest thing of, of all that he made, the mistake he made was he, he A moved right here. He 100% A moved guys. He backed up to the shield batteries and went, I'll just overpower it all. <clears throat> but the stat, but, but the damage of a void ray is pretty big. It's pretty scary. Uh, when the, when the, the thing is on a particle beam the, or prismatic alignment, whatever. Because I'm focus firing his void rays and they're dying pretty fast. And he's actually allowing his, his units to hit my probes. So it's not good. Which meant I had a lot of uptime with my void rays just smashing his army. He should have really focus fired my units. It would have been a lot more efficient for him there. He might not have still won the fight, but he would have definitely done a lot better than killing just one void ray again. Because that's that is what he killed. He, he killed one void ray. I've had this one stalker this entire game. This is the stalker I made out of the gateway before it died. He's been here the whole time. <laughs> and I've lost two Void Rays. One Void Ray when he, when he traded earlier with the with the one, one Void and two Stalker. And then I just lost one more Void Ray when he lost three Voids and like five Stalkers. Or was it two Voids and five Stalkers? It was two Voids, sorry. I was the one with three Voids. He had two. But, 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 but. All, all that said and done, okay? This, okay? this is a weird game. If you want me to really wrap it up, with a little bow on top, I can tell you this is exactly what should have happened. Remember when I said I saw two probes? I saw a probe right here. I also see a probe. Or sorry, that was the first probe. So I see a probe right here. That's the first probe. <clears throat> he goes in my base. I see him committing into my... Or, you know, he's running over here a little bit. I don't actually see that at all yet. But I did see a first probe, and now he's running in my base. And now look. I see a second probe. And I did say, oh, he's got two probes. I'm getting cannon rushed. So what happened? I walled my base off like you're supposed to. It works really well. But here's what I should have done. This is the adva this is the advanced. This guy, this guy is advanced. Okay? He's advanced cannon rusher. This should be a forge. And that should be a pylon, just like it is. <clears throat> this this allows me to block him out of my base so he can't come in and out. Uh, so if this probe dies, that's it. And now you know what I should have done next? This immediately, right now, this is all that should have happened. All I have to do is walk over here. Right. Now. Right now. Take a probe. 
I can I can attack his probe with my probe. It's totally fine. But I should have a probe of mine right now. Like right here. If this was a forge, I could have a probe of mine going like this. Build a pylon. Right there. Just build a pylon right there. And then it would finish over time. Before his does. And my pylon would be going, 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 going. It'd probably be halfway done right now. It would have been started about like five seconds after this pylon. So we'll count it, okay? If I started a pylon like here, when I said, it would have been like five seconds later than this one. So this one's finishing at 129. So we'll go to 134. The pylon here would be finishing right now. I could actually right now go cannon. Cannon. And it would be out of range of the cannons on the low ground. And the cannon rush is effectively over. And then I, I could just stop. I don't have to keep making cannons. I could just make a couple cannons and I'm done. And I have gas still mining. And from here, I could be like, let's now, make let's now after I make a couple cannons, now let's make a cyber core. And I'm good to go. And I could just out of my one gate, I could then make a cyber core. And eventually, if this probe is still running around my base, I can make a stalker to finally kill it. And, uh, but the forge is not done. A forge builds faster. Look at that. Look at the build time. A forge builds in 32 seconds. A gateway builds in 46 seconds. This gateway, if we, uh, if we, if we take, was, wait, what's the difference in that again? It's, uh, 46 versus 32. It's 14 seconds of difference. So if I were to take 14 seconds off, that would be at 32. So I guess, yeah, sure. At 32 seconds on this thing. Okay, forge is, forge is done, right? Now. So now I can start my pylon. Or my cannons. Now, okay, so that, that that's a fair call. Now I can start my cannons. Right now. Exactly. Because the forge would be finishing right now. And I'm still doing it before he's, he's even close. He's got six seconds left on these bad boys. Four seconds on that one. Six seconds on this one. And the, the whole thing about cannon rush is, if you build cannons first, you win. Because what that means is, is my cannons will finish before his finish, so they're going to start getting free hits off. And cannons kill cannons really fast. So that's all I would have had to have done. And I would have won the game. Uh, it would have been, been easy mode. But yeah, I chose to go gateway because I was like, fuck it. That's how we've been doing it before. And uh, it didn't work. So that's going to be our new way to defend cannon rush because people are better at keeping their probe alive anyways diamond one diamond one we made it